Let's go, let's go, let's go, Left Co. How you feeling? How you living? How you doing? What up, homies? Uh, awesome, awesome, awesome show coming your way today. So thank you for sticking around because it's only going to continue to get better. Uh, I'm going to talk to you guys for a little bit. Then David Deal, two-time Super Bowl winner, played in the NFL for over a decade, and he's done announcing and broadcasting and all that. Going to be on here for about like 55 minutes to an hour. I, I talk too much. I never keep time. And then at the very end, yes. We're calling Phil Sims at home. I checked with him. I did not clear it with Chris because Phil is a grown-up and he's an adult and I'd like to hear from him. Uh, I want to go through a a few things with you. One, shout out to Andrew Mitch, a.k.a. Woodmaster5000. He says that he will take off his eyebrows, so eyebrow gate uh, will continue. Uh, My advice to you, Andrew, is I've decided, if possible, a waxing is really what I'd like. And the reason is because Blake Jarwin didn't get 35 catches. If there's any way to wax and then mail them to me, I would like to get them framed for the studio, for the YouTube crowd out there. I'd like for them to see your eyebrows. Super excited about that. Also, did you check out the Lefko PR that's been working lately? Robbie Gould said he wants to play for the Bears. They gets franchise tagged by the Niners. Super smart move. Also, how about the NFL players right now putting basketball highlights out there? Derwin James, Duncan, Miles Garrett, Tomahawk Windmill. I like what these guys are doing. Dear players at the Combine, more basketball video, please. However, we asked for your help with names for this show. What it's going to be since Sims and Lefko is RIP. We had over 1,340 form submissions, which means over 1,340 of you went onto a random Google form and answered show names and guests and segments. And I have them here right now. Uh, Nick, if you have like the drums, drum rolls and stuff, that would be great, but not yet because here are uh, the honorable mentions that did not make the top 10 these are the top 10 show names that you guys submitted that i can't use or i'm not going to use but that made me really left honorable mention number one lefko's limp picks that was from jared hawk love that to be honest might start using that for my gambling segments throughout the regular season. By the way, for everybody out there, the Fantasy League is continue, continuing. We're going to do the betting stuff. It's going to be awesome. Another honorable mention, Nem and Lefko. That was from my now fiance Enem, who a lot of people want to come on the show so that you can ask her questions. I, I don't know. I'm still deciding if I want that to happen because she has some scary information that I do not want to have as leverage. The last one that's honorable mention didn't make the top 10 from William Martin, the Boulevard of Broken Spleens. Sims isn't here, thus spleen jokes are gone. So it is time for the top 10 show names that are not able to make the final cut. Nick, if I can get some drum roll, please, that would be amazing. At number 10. Of the show names that I can't use, or that I'm not going to. The Crunchy Biscuit with Adam Lefko. That one coming from Henry Meatloaf. Number nine, the Drew Brees Appreciation Society. Boy, do we love Drew. He's just so darn fantastic. That one's from Shane Nihill. The 49-Yard Club with Adam Lefko. William Ezel. Uh, I don't know if you guys are celebrating 49 or making fun of me. Either way, I'm not a fan. Can't do it. Number seven. Didn't know I had this title. Indonesia's Football King. That was from Senamalek. Apparently, Lefko is popping in Indonesia. Number six. Now we're going to start getting hateful from B-Room. Lefko. Oh, my God. It's all gone wrong. Yeah, that one was tough. Yeah, it's going that way. This one, I, I really like the ingenuity here from JWAX520. I really like the ingenuity here from JWAX520. Left and right. And then it has a note that says, you need to get a co-host whose last name is right. So great idea there from JWAX520. I just have to find a co-host with the last name right. Might have to call up Nick. Number four, 
Orenthal and Lefko. And then the subtitle is We Got the Juice. And this is from Tony, who wants me to just do a podcast with O.J. Simpson. Uh, Orenthal and Lefko. Yeah, that one. That one's definitely going to work. Number three, very on brand here, interrupted by Lefko. Because truly, whoever sits in that chair will be interrupted. That one was from Culpepper Eric. I also like that it's a play on, you know, there's the company Uninterrupted. We're just going to be interrupted by Lefko. And by the way, during my interview with David Deal, totally interrupted him a ton. Like, tons of it. It is back, and I am interrupting in a big way. Number two, this one is very well thought out. Lefko's Extraordinary Football Knowledge of Enterprise Podcast. If you spell that out, L-E-F-K-O-E pod. Very well done. Lefko's Extraordinary Football Knowledge of Enterprise Podcast. Really liked it. Number two, but the, and that one was from Dan Stilp. So awesome job, Dan. But the number one podcast name to replace Sims and Lefko that I'm not going to use, but I laughed and thought it was funny, from PB Bear, not as fat as he sounds. Awesome. I should totally have a show called Not As Fat As He Sounds, which I think is an, you're, you're saying that I have a fat voice, but that I'm not as fat as my voice is fat, which is just, mwah, really, really liked it. Uh, so to all the show titles out there, uh, I thank you for all the submissions. Just for a tally, again, of the 1,350, uh, this is where we stand right now, and we have to talk to Bleach Report and figure it out. But uh, the number four, number five most one was the Players Podcast. Number four was Out of Lefko Field. Number three was Somebody in Lefko. Number two was Lefko and the Homies. But the runaway number one was the Lefko Show. It rhymes. It sounds good. And at first, I was kind of like, nah, I don't really want it to be called that. But we're going to see. We're going to talk to people here at Bleacher Report. I've kind of, I kind of like the Lefko show. We're going to own it. We're going to make it feel good. If you're curious, the most voted on guests, uh, far and away the most voted on guest that you guys want is Patrick Mahomes, which was interesting. Number two was Aaron Rodgers. Number three was Baker Mayfield. Number four was Romo. And number five was Saquon. A lot of Pat McAfee's, a lot of Gronks. Um, Mike Lombardi, who we just had on there, was in the top ten. Uh, but a lot of good names that I'm going to give to our bookers, and we're going to see who they can get. But Patrick Mahomes, number one, and the Lefko Show was the number one. Uh, so, again, we're going to have David Deal on. We do Woe Big Off Season with David Deal, some quotes, and he talked about why his fingers are all over the place. The Eagles uh, Giants rivalry is really good, and I made him sign a contract to hold up his bargain of the 33%. By the way, this is also, I'm not going to abandon my man Chris Sims because I love him and I think that he does one thing really well and we can all attest to that, which was scout the quarterbacks. Well, the thing with Sims not being here anymore is I can listen to all of the scouts. I can listen to Daniel Jeremiah. I can listen to Matt Miller and Connor Rogers. I can listen to all the stuff that comes out. But I would be crazy to not listen to Sims. So I listened to Sims this morning, and he's come out with his top tier of quarterbacks. He believes that there's three above the rest. My man knows quarterbacks. I'm not going to not listen, but I'm also going to make sure that if he says something that I think is great, I'm going to bring it to you guys out of respect to him. But also, that's what the fucking show is. And I'm not going to stop cursing. And the sign's down, so who knows how many more F-bombs I'm going to drop. So first thing is he believes that there's three quarterbacks above the rest, Kyler Murray, Dwayne Haskins, and Drew Locke out of Mizzou. He believes is the upper tier of quarterbacks. What he said about Kyler Murray, more electric runner than he thought, maybe even more than Lamar Jackson, great decision maker, and he can stripe it. And he said that when he started watching him, that the bot, he thought he was going to be a 16 to 32 pick. And then he watched him and he went, he's a top 16 pick. That's Sims on Kyler Murray. Dwayne Haskins said he has a rocket arm, big and strong, can deliver from weird angles, and a, a great thrower. And while he only played one year, 
where he was at the end of the year was immensely better than where he was at the beginning of the year. Has a lot of confidence in him. Drew Locke, what's really funny is, Connor Rogers, who we're going to have on in two weeks from the Stick to Football podcast, he, over the years, because Connor's been here for like three, four years, got very good at predicting the quarterback that Sims was going to fall in love with. Because we all know the attributes Sims loves. Strong arm, big guy, you know, what Sims was when he was coming out. But he's a good appreciator of talent. That's why I respect it. But he predicted that Sims would love Drew Locke. Here's what Sims said about him. Definitely a first rounder, a special thrower of the football, makes some jaw dropping throws. He also makes some dumb mistakes that you make your jaw drop as well. And that's why he's not up there with the top two. And his argument for why he makes some mistakes was when you're on Missouri and your team is less talented than everybody else in the SEC, you have to push the envelope. But that is Sims's top tier. And then in terms of combine questions, when asked about Kyler Murray's size, because we've heard the reports, he's a 180, 190 guy that apparently has bulked up to 206. Sim says, I don't care if you're 206 now, what would you be in week eight? You're probably going to be back down to that 195. I thought that was a great point. And in terms of Kyler throwing, we actually talked about this with David Deal. Do you really want to see him out there next to Haskins? We all remember that combine photo, how much smaller he looked. That's my thing. My left go take right now on all the, the takes I'm hearing about the draft, to everyone that says the strategy of an NFL team should be to trade down and get more picks, duh, oh, you think? Like, every team wants to accumulate more picks. Every team that's drafting, the, the, the Cardinals need more picks. The Giants need more picks. The Broncos need more picks. If your addition to the NFL discussion is they should trade down and get more picks, of course. Like, that's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. Please step away from the micro microphone and give it to somebody that's actually done analysis of the players. I'm never going to sit here and say that. I'm going to talk to Miller. I'm going to talk to Connor Rogers. I'm going to bring in draft experts, and we're going to figure out what position a team needs. The answer of, <laughs> I'm going to trade down and get more, I can say that for all 32 teams. Seriously. Uh, a little bit of news and notes before we get to the homie David Deal. Nick Foles, while we were recording, uh, is going to be a free agent, not going to get franchise tagged. I'm going to be honest, it kind of upsets me a little bit because I was hoping that they were going to get value for Nick Foles, that it wasn't going to be this ceremonial like send-off at the same point. I'm not that mad at it um, because of what he did. And so I have the appreciation, but also the Jaguars have come out and said they're very interested. They were not interested to trade. I think they probably had an idea. If it's the Jaguars, Washington, those feel like the two that are most desperate. Again, Washington on the hook for Alex Smith's contract, and they don't have a guy. Um, I, I would imagine they're going to be looking in the draft too, picking in the teens. But, you know, Nick Foles to the Jaguars, John Filippo. And I don't want to give you all my takes because with David, uh, we broke this down a little bit more. Andrew Whitworth returning to the Rams. I think that's a huge story because if they were to lose him, they'd have to, they might lose Roger Saffold too because Saffold's one of the big free agent names in the interior line market. And as we've talked on this podcast forever, interior line play has always been bad. So to have a guy that's great, it would have left their offensive line with a lot of holes. Whitworth coming back is huge for them. Um, Quinn and Williams not doing the bench press. Connor Rogers and I from Stick to Football were talking about this yesterday. Left go PR. If you're already known for being amazing at something, don't do it at the combine. Lamar Jackson didn't run the 40 because what if he had his one bad run during that time? We already know he's fast. Kyler Murray, don't run the 40. Quinn and Williams, you're known for being enormous. Don't do the bench press. But do the other things and maybe impress us more. That's my left go PR. Do the combine. Everyone's going to say, man up. Do the co What are you afraid of? Do the combine. Listen. It's still a job interview. We still need to be smart. We don't need to show all of our cards. If everyone knows you're enormously strong, you don't got to do the bench press and go, wow, I thought he would have done more than 25. 
you don't need to do that. But run the 40, show everybody you're faster, do a three cone, show your speed and agility. That's my left go PR for guys in the combine. Uh, Dallas Cowboys. Randy Gregory suspended for substance abuse policy, breaking that. David Irving under evaluation for a possible suspension. It's time to move on. Every year, we don't know when they're going to be there. David Irving is truly one of the most athletic and talented defensive linemen in the NFL. It's a shame what's happening. I don't know what's going on in their lives and, 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 and really why this keeps happening. But they need to, in my mind, break free. Uh, and support them any way they can off the field. But in terms of their depth chart, their depth chart looks amazing every year. Taco Charlton, Demarcus Lawrence. Um, it, it was, um, damn, the uh, defensive line, defensive end that's been there forever. Uh, and then those two guys, they'd have like five or six guys. And every year you look at their depth chart and go, they're deep. And then these guys keep making, keep breaking policy and getting suspended. And then they're left in the middle of the year and they're a little shallow up front. Uh, I was thinking of Tyrone Crawford was the guy I was thinking about. But Malik Collins, they have some depth there. But, you know, David Irving's a free agent. I don't think he's going to be coming back. They have Antoine Woods. In my opinion, it's time to move on. One guy they're, they're not going to move on from is Zeke. It, it's already come out. Stephen Jones, acting general manager, son of Jerry Jones, has come out and said, quote, and this is an unbelievable quote, Zeke will get a significant contract with Gurley as the starting point. Zeke will get a significant contract with Gurley as the starting point, a.k.a. the Todd Gurley contract in which he was like one of the highest paid running backs in the NFL. $45 million he got. It was a four-year extension, $57.5 million in new money, 45 guaranteed. And the issue that I have with this, they're also saying they want to bring back Demarcus Lawrence. They're also saying that they want to give Dak a new contract before he's actually up. And here they are pigeonholing themselves into a monster contract with Zeke. If there's one guy that you can negotiate with who had a suspension, who's had some off-the-field stuff, who's had some banged-up injuries, it's Zeke. But the problem is, is that the Jones family is always obsessed with their players liking them. And I get it. The GM is the son of the owner. Every time I would watch shows with them, they're there, they're hanging out, they want to be friends. They want them to like them so much that they sabotage themselves in contract situations. Think about a few years ago. They were in cap hell. All the money to Romo, all the money to Witten, all the money to Dez, and they're always so shallow in depth because they're always trying to give a lot of money to their best guys on the team. And it leaves them with these huge holes at the rest of their team. There were no backup linebackers for a while. There were no great backup offensive linemen. Their wide receiving core was among the most shallow in the NFL. They're going to have Amari Cooper up for a contract too. Dallas just got themselves out of contract hell, but because they're so obsessed with their best players loving them and giving them a little bit of extra juice, they're going to put themselves right back in it, and they're going to be that much more reliant on their upper-tier guys. Enough of just me. You suffered through enough of that on Monday. Let's bring in the two-time Super Bowl champion, David Deal. He is here, the big man. He walked in, and I got a little scared because I know we're going to have a debate about Eli in a little bit. That's fine. But I'm excited to have you here, David Deal. How are you feeling? I'm excellent. I'm excellent. I'm uh, all charged up, ready to go. Got my workout in this morning, just like I'm sure you did. And, Don't uh, fucking antagonize <laughs> me like that. I saw your IG, and I was like, this guy's going like you're going to play still. No, no, no. That's Five one... days a week? How many days a week? Uh, I'll hit the weights three days a week. I'm on my Peloton twice or three times a week. And what are we week. benching? I'm not nothing over 275. I don't okay. need to do that anymore. My could elbows have done enough after 20 years of football of jamming do? and punching. Honestly, I don't know. I've never repped out. I haven't done weight like wow. that in a long time. I don't need to. I'm, I'm a washed-up meathead now. I know. I don't have to push the weight. Well, people like, I'm like me D-Lyman. love to hear the limits of your meatheadedness. I know, but you think about it. If I was <laughs> still back in the 320 days, 
I wouldn't fit in the urinal right now in the Bleacher Report Damn. bathroom. Those stalls I know. are tight. I'm like jammed in there now. I'm like, I wouldn't be able to go in here if I was still in the plane. No, because we have we have people that use Reddit and they <laughs> typically have slender bodies. Before we get going, I'm showing this to the camera right now. I have constituted a contract, uh, the 33% contract. I will read it out to you. Okay. Uh, just so you can understand the homies, the families. Right. I, David Deal, hereby agree to give my full 100% to fulfill the 33% of this esteemed show. I will stand in accordance with Lefko's 33% and the homies 33%, and I will focus on not giving 110% because that would throw off the math. I also promise not to ask about the missing 1%, otherwise I'll be publicly derided as a narc. So if you'd like to I sign I will sign that and everybody knows Nick Offerman said there is not a possible way to give 110%. That's right. BS. Yeah. So I will give 100% to the 33%. Thank if you. That's the way that it goes. He is here. signing it and we have his autograph. I will keep that on file, put the number 66. Thank you. There you go. Because the homies are giving 33, and I'm giving 33. you got to bring in the 33. And that was my basketball number growing up as a kid. 33? Larry Bird, Larry Legend. I didn't Man. play football until high school. So, for me, that was my, my background. I played AAU with Quentin Richardson, Corey wow. McGetty in Chicago. And uh, that was wow. my best background to have going into football. Number one, as a kid, I wasn't beat up. Like, I, I, I didn't right. play until high school. And then also, playing defense in basketball is – the same exact thing as playing left tackle in the NFL. Sure. Think of Eli as the quarterback, as the hoop. Yeah. The defensive end is the guy with the basketball stay trying. Front. Staying around, going to the same power angle, same cutoff, except for in football. You get the punch, you get the jam. It's, Look, I it's just, the same thing. So. I just said one of my left go PRs right now is if you're an NFL athlete, especially someone at the Combine, you need to be putting clips of you being awesome at basketball online because it's clearly spreading. It's all over right Derwin now. Derwin James dunking. I'm watching Miles Garrett. Windmill and do crazy stuff. I That's found insane. that clip of Quentin Nelson doing a behind-the-back yeah. pass. The, people love it. And if I'm a guy in the combine, and let's say I have some questionable character stuff, put a clip of you doing a windmill dunk because then the reporters are going to ask you about that giving you less time to have to answer tough questions. Well, everybody loves Love that, those videos out there. Everybody loves seeing, oh, wow, look at how explosive he right? is in his stance. It is going to dwindle away anything of the bad things that yes. are going to come about with social media, which we've seen over the past 100%. couple of years with these guys. All right, so because you're here now and you're giving your 33%, All we're right. going to do a little bit of, whoa, big off season, <laughs> which are stories that really aren't that big of stories, but they're fun to talk about. And I have my phone here because it, it we're doing this in the middle of press conference is at the Combine, and a lot of news can break and funny things can be said. But this one was uh, John Gruden, apparently, whoa, big off season. he's such a grinder that last season he hired a driver to drive his SUV with multiple televisions while he was watching All-22 film from his home to the facility. Whoa, it's a big off season. Yeah, it is Gruden. a big off season, but I would say more whoa if I didn't hear this already from Philip Rivers going back right. and forth, this that's the thing. Like Copycat now you're the league, second man. guy and you're coming out with it. Believe me, we know that you're crazy about yeah. football, Chucky, but this has already been done. Philip Rivers my, stole the thunder for this one. My dream is that he actually lives five minutes from the facility and he does it for that one five minute <laughs> gap. I would be more impressed if he lived really close to the facility than further away because he needs to maximize those four minutes. He saw the first five plays of Blitz pickup and he's like, okay, I'm good to go I'm for good. the day. I'm, I'm good. ready. I'm good. All right, this is an amazing woe big off season because it's so Bengals. A lawsuit has been filed by Bengals season ticket holder Scott Poston, claiming he needs total reconstructive surgery on his right shoulder after slipping and falling in a substance used to clean vomit while attending a Bengals home game <laughs> against the Steelers. Was it like that sawdust, like crazy it's smelling called, stuff as a it's kid? It's called Devour Absorbent Powder. I'm like you. I grew up where they would just sprinkle, sprinkle sawdust. Sprinkle stuff over it, and it had that weird smell anyways. You had other kids in the room throwing up already. Apparently, they would throw this on there, and you're supposed to clean it off soon. But they just kind of left it, and he slipped and fell, and now he's suing the team. Do they got a month around it? Because, you know, if you're starting to get into that cold weather and you didn't clean it right. up, you got a case on your hands. Uh, I didn't see the Bon Jovi slippery when wet tour thing right. out there. I think my thing is there's no way, 
even if I was in the bathroom, that I would be able to be a witness. Because as soon as I see someone slip and fall, I get so fucking embarrassed that I got to leave. Like, I like I know just he just in general, fell in vomit. Uh, and it's not the vomit, just in general, people slipping and oh, falling. Oh, like, if I'm if I'm on the subway and somebody, like, like you know when the, sometimes the subway starts and people fall? Yeah. I got to turn away because I'm going to laugh in your fucking face and I don't want to be there I am for the that. same exact way yes. and I can't hide that emotion. No. This one girl. Speaking of which, it was Atlanta going to the Super Bowl. Walking, kind of like showing off her new Uggs. Yeah. Turf monster. Bites it Bad. right in front of people. I literally bit my cheek and turned yes. away because she got up and she looked right at me. I had to turn back like, I are you okay? It. Yes. Because I'm never going to be the guy that helps you up. Like, I'm just being very honest. Unless you're an elderly person, I have to laugh. Like, I expect people to laugh at me. Like, if I fall, I'm getting up and I'm making a joke because I don't want anyone to be like, bro, you okay? Le no. When you've always been the biggest kid, do you think anybody in their life has mm. ever tried to help me up? Absolutely not. Even on the football field, knocking somebody over, getting knocked down, there was no helping hands. No. There was no reaching help. I've fallen. I can't you've get up. You've probably heard, like, Big Tree fall hard a million times in your life. Absolutely. Yeah. And like you said, nobody cares. You're the big guy. Oh, you're good. Yeah. You're fine. You you're can wipe good. that right off. Damn. All right, so I do have a few good quotes that have come out really in the last day or two. Uh, new head coach of the Denver Broncos, Vic Fangio, quote about Denver, the sun does shine a lot. They weren't fibbing, but they didn't tell me about my skin drying up, even my greasy Italian skin. I love Vic Fangio. He apparently sounds like a, a, an Italian mobster, and I need to find audio of it. But if he's going to be this character that can provide a lot of quotes, I'm very excited. Absolutely. He's an old-school football guy. That's Have you ever that, talked to him before? Absolutely. I've interviewed with him. I've been on the opposite side of the ball yeah. with him. And the one thing that you saw last year out of that Bears defense – it was like I was watching tape getting ready for the NFC Championship Niners. game in 2011. Sure. That Niners defense was so similar. They're adding more pieces to it. We know Khalil Mack obviously did to them last yeah. year. But, yeah, he has those one-liners all the time. He's not going to give you too much information, but he's going to answer the question. And that's the thing. He is funny. They asked him when they got Khalil Mack, oh, he's a beast. What do you think of him? Yeah, he's, he's good. Yeah. <laughs> that was it. I, that was it. I'm willing to say that I believe that they're definitely in the top three that I believe Italian people are some of the top three funniest people in the world. I agree. They're one-liners. Every time I meet someone that's, like, really Italian, they crack me up all the time. See, I'm Croatian, so we're across oh, from I the know. heel of Italy, so it's the same type of temperament. But, yeah, Italians, Greeks, my roommate from college, his dad could be one of the funniest guys. When you understand what he's saying at right, the right, times right, when right. he gets excited, could be one of the funniest guys you'll ever sit down and meet with. You ready for this? What's David up? David Deal from the island of Kirk. Yeah. Do yep. I get it? Kirk and Lovrich, yep. You yes. got it. We're going to talk more Croatian because we have a, an employee here. His name's Gabe. He's the man. Uh, for people that have listened to the podcast a long time, he's Stinky Fingers Gabe. <laughs> he is he is so Croatian that he told me about like your tattoo yeah. on your arm, and he says that you're a legend for life just for having the flag there. You know, it was so funny. About two years ago, I get a call. It's during the summertime. I'm looking. I'm like, Tony Gonzalez. He goes, deal I'm in VAR right now, Croatia. You didn't tell me you're a legend. I'm looking at a jersey and one of your cleats in this That's bar. That's amazing. I'm like, get out of here. The next day, he calls me FaceTime. I'm like, FaceTime? Why? My uncle's sitting next to him in the bar in Croatia. Wow. What a small world. How much of your family is still in Croatia? My, uh, my mother was the one that came over with her family, but wow. I still have aunts and uncles all over the coast. Do you and go everything. back often? Yeah, I haven't been in two years just because of busy during the summer and doing things. And then this year now, once my daughter being 12, I'm definitely going back this summer. So if, let's say, we went to Croatia, yeah. it would be like a hero's march, you think? Where like if you were like walking down the street? They'd be like, a grum, no grum, the giant. They, they say the giant. <laughs> So that funny That's story. Your over there? Yeah, going back in 2012 after we won the Super Bowl, I'm with my best friend since I was six, Tomislav, another Croatian Great. name. We're running through Split, which is the big major city, and I kind of turn to my side and I see his face. He's white and he's going, "Stop, stop!" I have headphones on. We're just I'm training during the summer. I turn around and there's two police officers running at us, like holding on their guns. I drop my headphones off. I stand there like this. Yeah. Well, no, grab a photo, photograph. I'm ah. like, all right. I'm like, but we got to do one thing. They're like, what's that? I'm like, I got to wear the hat. They're like, okay. So I'm here with two Croatian police officers, and I got the hat on, and I'm standing That's next amazing. to them in the middle of the town. But talk about 1 o'clock in the afternoon just running through You're the city. You're telling me there's an entire country that calls you giant? Yeah, Gromno, yeah. Wow. 
Wow. Did you ever not like the nickname? No. I mean, I've always been the biggest kid. I used to have to bring my birth certificate since second grade on to basketball. This kid's not in third grade. They used to be yelling (laughs) from the crowd. So I've always been used to that. I think it was just so cool to go back from, you know, when we won in 2007 for the first time. Because at that time, Bill Belichick's Croatian as well. So there are, oh, two Croatians in the Super Bowl for the first time. Wow. To start going back later and seeing, like, giant shirts in places and people pointing me out. You know, soccer's number one, and of that course. will never change. Basketball, number two. Right. Dino Raja, Tony Kukoc, yeah. great dudes. Oh, man, Kukoc. But football now, they're all picking it up. They've got direct TV. They're watching games. They know fantasy stuff. And that's why when you go over there, and you, when I was there last year for the games in London, Anytime in Europe, you can have a coffee, a cigarette, and gamble on sports. They're all in. That's awesome. So when you think about now them moving over to London and having more games there, Germans, Italians, they know so much about the game now that going back in 07 when we played there up against the Dolphins the first time, we were getting booed for the victory formation. We want more football. We're like, this is the greatest game in football (laughs) and greatest play in football right now, kneeling, yet they didn't understand the rules. Going back this year, this guy's got 1,500 yards last year. They knew everything really? about the game. Yeah. Every NFL jersey was represented, too. Sitting uh, there watching a family of four, a husband, wife, a daughter, and a son come walking. And I'm looking at them. Dad's wearing Raiders. Mom's wearing Ravens. Daughter was wearing, uh, what was she wearing? Titans. And the son was wearing Seahawks. Man. So I'm like, I have always thought those families are plants. I'm like, where are you guys? I've always thought the NFL yeah. like, pays people. I'm and like, just where says, are you guys from? Here's a Tannehill jersey. We're, we're from Germany. I'm like, really? They're like, yeah, we started getting in the NFL. We picked our teams based upon the jerseys. These are our teams. Wow. So they had like an inner rivalry in their family just based upon the jerseys. And now they all follow the sport. That's crazy. Have you ever spoken with Belichick about your Croatian ties? Yeah, yeah, I have. What kind of conversation? Yeah, he's been there before. Obviously, his, uh, his mother's side and everything like that. So, yeah, that's part of it. But when you talk to Bill Belichick, if you're not talking about Volvos and lacrosse, you're not getting far with them that really? much. Yeah, that's awesome. You want to talk can about he lacrosse? Speak some Croatian? No, not no. He, you got it. Though. I was raised around yeah, it, yeah. so I'm used to hearing it. I can understand everything. I can speak broken and kind right. of street kind of slang. Yeah, but you could hear everything. I can. Understand. I just hear it's like the most perfect beaches in the world. It's absolutely incredible. There's over two thousand islands. So literally, Damn. you and can no go. And no one ever talks about that area. Like everyone talks about Italy, but no one I feel like talks Brad about that part of Pitt Croatia. Just invested over a billion dollars in Croatia. Damn. Him and a oh, firm. First they're question building is a Brad Pitt course. has over a billion dollars. Him, he's a big wow. financial investor. They're building a huge golf course out there. Actually, where Drazen Petrovic is from, on wow. an island because there's no golf courses out there. It's going to be monumental. Damn. So think of all those islands. Literally, you bounce the coast two days here, catamaran two days here, and you just. Hop along. It's right. gorgeous. Well, you've already you've just invited me, so that's really You're great. In. Thank you. You're part of the uh, fam. Another quote, Bruce Arians said he told his staff that if they ever miss one of their kids' recitals or games, that he would fire them. Quote, you can always make up that time at work. That is the most anti Bill Belichick thing I've ever and heard. Tom Coughlin. Anybody. Ever. I don't. I don't know about that. Like right. I, I appreciate people caring about their families. I have heard stories about Bruce Arians before that. That's kind of his personality, it where is. he'll take off at five and go hang out with his wife, and that's great. But the the football guy in me is going Mm-mm, can't handle that. I, I, I You're missing all their recitals. And see, that's the thing. It, it is polar opposite of Coach Coffin. Considering my O line coach Pat Flaherty had a blow up mattress in his office to spend wow. nights there because he was grinding, doing so much stuff. But I feel that's the way that you are as an athlete, as a competitor. Like, you don't want to think, like, okay, I got to leave at five because of this, and maybe I didn't get everything right. done. Like, you want to make sure I that you're like leave. an asshole for being upset that these kids are, guys are skipping kids' soccer well, games. Playing 11 seasons in the NFL, like, believe me, it was tough not hearing my daughter's first words or seeing her take her first Damn. steps. That's difficult. But going to the Super Bowl in 07 when she was two. And then going to it and winning in 11 again when she's six and she has the Lombardi trophy yeah. with me and she understands, that makes it all worth it. You're sacrificing for their future and yeah. for them to not only give them the financial things that they need in life, but to lead by example. The yeah. way you work, your work ethic, those are things that I always had in my family. So I understand those things if it was a time where you know you can get away but if it's a Thursday and you're breaking down third That's down a saying. game film, getting ready to go yeah. up against uh, another defensive coordinator yeah. like a Vic Fangio, 
You're not going to get much sleep sitting there looking at a daughter's recital, and you're sitting there, oh, I didn't get through this tape. I've still got to do That's this the thing. game. That's the toughest thing I about would, it. I would argue that I would be upset if I'm a coach now because I'm going, no, Bruce, I don't think you're understanding. I don't want to go to Tommy's tuba lessons, <laughs> so please just let me tell that I have to break down secondary tendencies. Last quote. This one, though, is actually kind of serious. Steve Keim, general manager of the Cardinals, on if Josh Rosen is the starting quarterback for the Cardinals this season, his quote is, he is right now. There it what, is. One, why even say right now? You don't even need why to Why did say you start that. the controversy, Steve? All you have to do is say he's our guy. Yes. He's our quarterback. And, shut up. and that's it. Because you don't have to give them for now because, sure enough, here we are talking about it. Because my of thing what would it leads be, into. because when you combine this with the fact that Cliff Kingsbury has been rumored to be obsessed with Kyler Murray and want him to take him with the first pick, and then I'm going... You know who Josh Rosen has always reminded me of? Who's that? Fucking Eli. Really? Not a great mobile guy, super smart dude in the pocket, not the strongest arm in the world, but good, accurate, throws great passes down the seams. And the Giants are sitting there, and they got to move on from Eli eventually. Yeah. That, I don't know, this starts me thinking like the Josh Rosen to the Giants to like kind of work with Eli for that one year. Gettleman came out today and said, Eli's our guy. Shermer came out today and yep. said, I want him to be our quarterback. I'm just kind of turning this into an Eli no thing. No problem. We could but First of all, in regards to the Arizona Cardinals and Cliff Kingsbury, if he is 100%, then Kyler Murray is his guy. You as an organization better go out and make that move mm -hmm. to make sure that he is and not have the feelings for Josh Rosen. He wasn't on the coaching staff that wanted Josh Rosen. He wasn't in charge of who they scouted and who they wanted yeah. for that roster. And when you make a move from a coach who got fired from a college going to be an offensive coordinator at another college and then going in to now being the head coach of an NFL team – you better give him every available asset that he needs because not only is his job on the line, but Steve Keim, your job's oh, on, the line, job's well. on the line as well. His job's been on the line for a while. So now with this being said, if you don't go out and get him this player that he wants and that yeah. he believes can run his system, this could be the worst hire in NFL history if it fails. Damn, David. That's the facts, though. That's yeah. the truth. Because if this is his guy, like he said a year ago in Kyler Murray, he could do everything in his offense. If I had a number one overall pick, yeah. I'd take him. Then if that is your firm 100% belief and yeah. confidence in him, you better make that move and better not have a single doubt about it. And and to go back to the Eli thing, I'll yeah. spin right into yeah, it. I'm please, not dodging it. No, 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 of course. The thing I, I, you know, I let me Let me state this. this. I am an Eagles fan. I'm going to set all the ground rules with you right now. Okay. I'm an Eagles fan. All right. We have kicked your ass for the last 20 games. Before that, you guys kicked our ass when you were there. Uh, I am someone that will – you can't give all the credit to the quarterback, and you can't give all the blame. It's 11 guys on Without offense. Without a doubt. Offensive line, super banged up, a lot of rotations. The weapons, though, are there now. And I know that there were some injuries. Yep. But I am someone that have said on this program many times, Eli Manning <sighs> – is a problem at this point. I don't think that Eli scares you to go deep. I also think that Eli is a little scared of his offensive line, and I don't think he's he's either holding the ball too much at, at this point or he's throwing it away too quickly. I, as an Eagles fan, love that Eli is back. I'm just stating that for the record, <laughs> and I'm happy to go back and no, forth with you. Good with that. But I But I also will say, because I, I went back and listened to you on Francesca Noah, there have been so many changes in the offensive line. Oh, yeah. I and think so many 12 combinations. So I don't want to put everything at his feet, but you are I don't think you're winning it with Eli this year. So I'm just going to state my truths. Go ahead. And, and you will say this. Last year until the second half to where they really – had a diagnosis of what type of roster they had, what they could implement offensively, yes. what didn't work. And, and their once, first half schedule was insanely it was, tough. It was tough. And no one talked about no, it. No, but, but you, to, to even go back to that, those were times that Eli was seeing the rush, not feeling it. Exactly. He saw the rush in those, and it, how could you not when I they're barreling it. down the model of your, your A and B gaps yeah. with blitzes and it's not getting picked up. I understand that there has to be a transition to move on from Eli as a quarterback. As an athlete, whether you take yourself off of the shelf or it gets stamped, you have an expiration date. There's going to be a time where you're done and your career is, is over. I think with the way that they have to transition, he's down for competition. They're going to have to either draft or get a free agent quarterback in here that's not going to be a stopgap and that is going to be the, 
future of this franchise. Yeah. But when you talk and when you talk about a, a Haskins who's a one year starter, I understand he has a coach in Ryan Day that's a great one that had all that time in the NFL with Chip Kelly and now under Ohio State yeah. running a pro style scheme. But he barely got hit this past season. You never saw him really take on those big hits that he has to bounce up from. And when you saw him in certain games, there wasn't that consistency that you're looking out of, like the four quarterbacks that we had coming into last year's right. draft. So what does everybody do? They're trying to pump those guys up to make Always. that draft the same as it is, but it's not. You knew that not coming into this. Yeah. So if Haskins is the guy after they evaluate everything – Eli will go in, he'll be, even yes. though he doesn't use the word mentor, he'll be the guy to help him. He'll be the guy to help groom him and understand, not only just based upon talking, but the preparation and what Eli does, breaking down film, those are things that you can't get by just another coach. Right. Those are things that you get from a veteran player. There are two types of veteran quarterbacks in this league. There's the Alex Smith, who Patrick Mahomes has spoke very yep. openly about, will sit there and explain things and work with him and do all that stuff. And then there's the Eli or the Big Ben, which is watch my actions. Yeah. And you're just going to learn that way. I don't have time because I need to prepare for a week two, week of course. three. And you just watch and learn. Both can be effective. It just depends, I think, more on the student than the teacher sometimes. Because the student has to drop the ego, too, and go, why aren't you helping me? That's not how the NFL works. No. Man. Just fucking learn. No, just it, watch. That, that is not how it works. And that's where those lines were blurred in Green Bay yes. between McCarthy and Aaron Rodgers. Yeah. You could tell that there wasn't the Bill Belichick, Tom Brady, the Drew Brees, the right. Sean Payton. That you could be great with your coach, and, but when time comes to it, he makes the decision, and that's it. And There's that's no it. second guessing it. Yeah. And that's what separates people from being a part of a team and the rest of the team. He's one of us. He's treated the same way compared to, well, how come he's getting away with it and I'm not? Yeah. That's what's taking place in Pittsburgh right now. But to, to continue to go back to it, Eli, even throughout the time with the, the Davis Webb and the Geno right. Smith, oh, I'm not a mentor. That morning, even though he was going to get benched, he's sitting there in the cafeteria talking with those two going right. down coverages. So even though you say you're not the mentor, that's the quarterback coach's job. That's not your job. Your job is to lead by example and show these guys what it takes day in and day out and game in game out, game out to go in there prepared and ready to play your best and bring out the best in other guys. You mentioned the greatest young quarterback in the NFL the guy that has binders full of notes and had to get his own printer and maybe throws too hard, Davis Webb. We, we joke about him all the time because there's been no more pieces written about a guy that's never really played. What, how did that whole, just being around the organization, how did the folklore of Davis Webb even start? Well, I think the Is fact, he that good of a worker? Well, I, I think the fact that when you have a guy that's behind Eli Manning that's taking the notes and doing right, the due right, diligence right. to do it, that's great. But at the same time... That potential, better meet productivity out yeah. on the football field. So when I just you, thought it was so funny. So when you continue to hear, well, well why not you're addressing Davis Webb? Why, well, he's not re He obviously wasn't ready to play, and you're not going to throw him out there. He had like a fan base and had never And done. you're not going to get a fair evaluation. If Eli's running for his life, how is this guy going to do it without right. a running game? And that's where the Hail Mary between Ben McAdoo and Jerry Reese came up. Well, Geno Smith can run for his life better than those two guys. Maybe right. they'll salvage our careers. Mm. Well, that was uh, something that you're not going to bet on in New York City, no. considering you're talking about who's going to be the future of your franchise. Well, I watched a lot of game film for the New York Jets, and you knew that wasn't Geno Smith. Uh, you were in the, you were part of the news recently because Landon Collins is coming up on whether he's going to be franchise tag, yeah. getting a contract. There were some reports that came out that he's cleaning out his locker, he's ready to move on. Then you come over the top with a tweet and you go, I was there. I was walking out with Landon. Yeah. That's not what happened. So what did happen? Where, where does it stand right now with Landon? I got done uh, after doing interviews with college players and I actually interviewed his brother who's a defensive tackle for the University of Miami who's coming out for the combine. Okay. I'm walking through the locker room and there's Land. Hey, what's going on? He just gets done doing his treatment on his shoulder, talking with him, tell him I just interviewed his brother. Everything goes great. I walk out. He goes the other way. Next thing you know, I, I reports he's mad, he's disgruntled, cleared out his locker, he walked out with everything. I'm like, he had a Louis Vuitton backpack and I walked out with him. <laughs> like, And that's the thing. Like, I don't mind when you go out there and you say this happened or that happened, but you better not just use a source for it. And if All I'm right. going to put something out there, which people said, well, you haven't tweeted since the Super Bowl. I played and started over a decade in the NFL yeah. on the offensive line. I won two Super Bowls. I use my opinion based upon 
facts, things that I know that are correct, yeah. especially when you see them firsthand compared to opinions and sources, I would never use that, nor would I ever have to use that. Where do that. you think the Giants and Landon are now? I think that they're negotiating and trying to figure it out. You figure you still have the franchise tag as available yeah. as that option. But when you think about him, you know he's a better down-in-the-box player when he can be that roamer, be yes. that eighth player, and really help out in the run game and part of the blitz package. But it's been unfortunate. It's been a revolving door at the free safety oh, position next to him. And in that secondary. So when you look at the overall was it? picture. Was it Darian Thompson, Dorian Thompson? The that kid? was two years ago. He was on the Cowboys. He was supposed to be, like when they drafted, was it Boise State Boise or State. When they took him, everyone said, it's aligned. And it just never panned Until out. you saw him completely miss tackles in the open yeah. field, take bad angles, and compete over the top. Was he Those part are of things that? that aren't good when you're the no, safety. No, 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 no. You know? Uh, let me get your analysis really quickly of Will Hernandez. Will? And some of the offensive line. Because he was supposed to be a come in right away and be a stud. And there's a growing curve to all this. I, I definitely. I think that he got much better, especially in the second half of the season. Okay. You knew he was a road grader, but he needed to refine and, and work on his technique in the passing game, which he got so much better at because early on, you know, when you, you always think you're either a gunslinger or you're a boxer. If right. you're a gunslinger and you're shooting from the hip, your hands, it's too late. A defensive guy has his hands inside and he's controlling you. As a boxer, your hands are always up and, and punching. And he fixed that in the He half. fixed that. And also with that, and being the boxer, not getting his head and shoulder forwards. You can maul and you want to attack people. But if your weight's off balance. Pull and shoot. You're getting ripped right so through you have, there. So you have high hopes swim. for him going forward. I do. I think that he's going to be a very good football player for the New York Giants. How many pieces do they have on the O-line that you have confidence in going forward? Honestly, right now, two. So him and Nate Solder. And you think, because I know Solder, you go from the Patriots where it's a six and a half step drop yeah. and get the ball out in three seconds. He had to probably change his Without whole game a doubt. Too. He had to change his vertical. What kick do they set do at center, set. right guard, right tackle? That's the big question. Obviously, they talked about last year, Jalapio, but he got hurt, you know, that he's going to come in and compete. But the right side of the offensive line. Obviously, Jawan Brown came in last yes. year, but he's a free agent. they got to figure out if they're going to re-sign him. Yeah. I wouldn't sign him to a huge deal. There's a reason why the Rams let sure. him go. There's always a reason to yeah. it. And you saw him when they weren't running the football well, exposed, especially up against man Fletcher Cox on the he's Philadelphia Eagles. He's the greatest. Yeah. He's re Guys like him are reasons why I retired. Man. Seeing these guys that are that were big, they, that strong. Were guys like that in the league when you were there? My last year playing was 2013, and that was right his second year, I want to say. I just feel like right now him, Chris Jones, uh, then Aaron, you have like Donald. the Aaron Donalds, the Khalil Max. I, I just don't feel like there were too many of those guys, like the super big and fast guys. I feel like this has been like a recent creation. Now, there's always been special guys. Yeah. But, like, I feel like you it see was more of a Richard Seymour compared to a, a get up field, dash, penetration, right. make him read right. A much different type of play. And I feel like now we're valuing the defensive tackle stars more than we are the edge guys. Like, I'm when seeing. When you're this... getting production and sacks from a three technique exactly. inside, how could you not? Especially like when Quinn you're looking... and Williams, like the kid yeah. out of Alabama. Alabama. I'm seeing him going two, and then I'm seeing the Josh Allens and those speed outside guys going after him, where years ago that would have been completely flipped. See, I, you know what? I, I can see part of that, but at the same time, you're just throwing stuff out there because of how deep the defensive tackle draft yeah, group of is. You know, that's some place that if you are 100% committed to a, a Williams – you you could pull that trigger, but if you're not and you feel like okay, I can get Allen, I can get an edge mm. rusher, and I can wait maybe till the second round. Yes, you could take that gamble, gamble, and still get the return on investment in the second round mm. because it's so deep. Now, when you're looking at quarterbacks or skill position guys, that's where it's really going to be tricky in this draft. This is a deep offensive line, defensive tackle, defensive end draft. So the Eagles just announced that Nick Foles will be a free agent. Yeah, they're not going to franchise tag him. And then good Sheft for good for good for him and good for I them to do that. Well, I, I know that you do. I want something back. I know. You got like, two million back. Isn't that enough in return from a, a very religious good man? Are they going to break that up into <laughs> he is that? Are they going to break? Am I going to get like six dollars and forty two cents? But Schefter, <laughs> Schefter just tweeted that uh, the Jaguars are the favorites for Foles. Of course, you know Coughlin, is John that, DiFilippo. Is that a, other than? DiFilippo was his OC, and they need a quarterback because Blake Bortles is trash and all that stuff. The Tom Coughlin, Nick Foles, is that a marriage like Marone? It would, that would work 100%. Okay. 
because he knows what type of person and character that Nick Foles is. He knows what type of leader he is in that locker room. I mean, come on. What other locker room basically has a shrine to the second-string quarterback like in Philadelphia? Yeah. That's why you knew, regardless of what took place, for Carson Wentz to really take over that football they team. Get rid Nick of Foles couldn't be on that yeah. roster. I think that fit is perfect. And when you do have a running back like they have in Fournette, an offensive line, even though they went through, what, five yes. guys on injured reserve, three of the starters with Norwell being their big right. signing, they'll all be back healthy. They need weapons on the outside to help out with that team to stretch the field to – Help that defense. I know. If you have a front seven and a secondary like that, all you have to do is control the time of possession. Yeah. Keep these guys fresh, and they'll be able to unload. I think even more than being a good quarterback and being a good decision maker, I believe, and having spoke to some of these Jaguars players, the the the, the fact that they gave Blake Bortles that two-year deal for like $40 million or 36 whatever Which it was. Which everybody was shocked about. It has to upset the locker room. Yeah. Because they're going – well, why did I get such less money? And they're also going, we have all been good soldiers. Yep. And we have not gone in the media. And we have not said that our defense is the reason we got to the AFC Championship Which game. Which everybody knows. And you guys were afraid to throw the ball with a minute left in the first half to expand our lead. And you we might as well have just kneel. Yes. And we they, they did pretty yeah, much. Yeah, I mean, you might as and well have. They, we have also not alienated our teammate. But now... You give a Super Bowl winning quarterback MVP to that team, it has to give a confidence that's going to be in mini camp, that's yep. going to be in rookie camp, that's going to be in training camp. That they're going to look over and it, it's going to make you work harder. Like it has to. It that, has to. He has thrived in the best moments that you can as a player in the NFL, the playoffs and in the Super Bowl. What more can you ask for out of a player like that compared to what you've been getting over the He's last three seasons? He's reverse Andy Dalton. And he, what I mean by that is, is this. That is a great comparison. Is if Andy Dalton is – He's bizarro Andy Dalton. If he throws 500 yards for the first eight weeks of the year, every single game, and that's 4,000 yards in eight weeks, we would all go – yeah, the but what's going to happen in the coming. playoffs? <laughs> Nick Foles could throw for 100 yards for the first eight weeks, and we can go, what did he get to the playoffs, though? He's going to ball out. And to sit here and say that he didn't bring a different life and energy to that oh. Eagles team after they got blown out in New Orleans would be completely false. Yes. You know what type of atmosphere that he brings. You know that he has trust in the players. He gets rid of the football quickly, and bringing him and he in takes hits. would get – rid of all that negative attention that the defense got this past year because they have somebody on that side of the ball and 100%. that they believe in. All right, so I want to play a quick game. Uh, shout out to uh, Reddit NFL, RNFL. I still subscribe that the people that comment on Reddit are better than the producers at ESPN. They come <laughs> up with better topics. It's awesome. And someone compiled a list of audio of all the quarterbacks' cadences in the NFL. And if I could distinguish which player it is? And I want, I'm want i going to play it for you, and I want to see if you can figure out who it is. So I have five or six here. And I'm going to test you here. So, Nick, put up that audio. And the first one is this. Let's see if you could figure out who this is. It's third and 11. This, uh, one more yeah. time. Is that Brady? All right, so playing at home. So you say Brady. It's possible, yeah. Uh, Correct answer is Andrew Luck. Really? Yeah. Take a listen to Captain the Andrew. Third and oh, yeah, you that's, hear that's it now, through the right? beard and the mouthpiece. Exactly. Yes. Uh, how can quarterbacks' cadences, like, throw you off All when you're different. the offensive yeah. line? Yeah. Like, if you're used to one guy, his voice his, is probably just in your head and all their, the time. And their rhythm and their tempo to it. That's the thing that you always hear, the tempo of an ah. offense. It's in and out of the huddle and getting up there and being crisp with it. When you have a, a quarterback that's new and all of a sudden he's making a different call, alert and audible right. at different times and the cadence are pulling out, that's where you're like, okay, this could be difficult, especially when you're in big third down. All right, this one's very special to me, so I hope you get it. That's false. No, it's Aaron Rodgers. Is it really? Aaron Rodgers. I, Dude, I'm gonna these be are so small. I know. I thought it was going to be longer, but they're, it's. I think this is a lot harder than I thought it was going to be. All right, so how about this one? Screen, the backup quarterback. That's E. <laughs> I know that. I heard the white. I heard the W. That's Eli. Right away. 100%. So what I, is I it? I heard a split second. 
I heard a, I heard the tone right away. What is it about it? Well, first of all, they're going on two, and then secondly, hold on. Why? How did you get that? Red, white, blue. Damn. Do they still use that? They change it up, but that's okay. a given. A lot of teams do that. And, ooh, what other ones like that have you used There's before? There's a lot. You could do, we used to mess around. We used to do a bunch of different stuff, but we would mess with defenses. We would say, hey, disco, 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 disregard the audible. Mm. And that means, like, hey, you're going He's going to do some crazy He's shit, gonna do we're some not doing crazy, Yeah, we're not doing anything. This is all just smoke and mirrors until he gives the Has there code ever word. been a change or something like that that was the most effective that you remember, like, one play where you guys talked about something? And we would call stuff that we were, like, run play stuff to get play action going. All of a sudden, you get this defensive tackle going into the dirt, like, anchor down. You'd see linebackers crawl up. You have a tight end peeling right over the top. And are of you it. It trying beautiful. not to smile? No. I mean, you're sitting there punching a guy. You're not smiling. No, but I mean, like, before it. the play, you're seeing a team getting no, ready. No. And you're like, we got them. No, there was a, you have those. You have your, your checks, your alerts, your audibles, those that are in the huddle. But there's also times where you just have the gamesmanship up front. You know, the defensive linemen aren't the smartest guys in the world, but right. they'll pick up after a while if you keep yeah. using the same thing. Rich Soybert, he and I played together for over 40 games. One time, we're going in with a pass play. Uh, he's like, okay, we're going to check to a play action. We're like, all right, we check to the play action. He and I make a, a fake run call. Sure enough, we alert what back. What do you mean by that? What's a fake run call? We just made like a like a deuce or something like that. What, like what we're going to double you said team. said to each other? Yeah, like do, do, do. So like we're going to double team and move the three technique. And maybe the defense is going to pick yeah, that up. Yeah, he's going to kneel down. He thinks that we're going to double him and we're kick setting. Sure enough, we checked from a play action Back to the run. Oh, no. We so got no fake. movement at the point of attack. Oh. Tackle for like a one-yard loss. We're like, we got too smart for our own good. Because you were trying to trick Yeah, we were trying to Damn. trick the defense. Yeah. Has there ever been a defender, defensive lineman, linebacker, safety, that, that was so adept at picking up your plays that it scared you? Well, London Fletcher was one of those guys. Figure how long he played sure. in the NFL like for the Redskins. Years or something like that. Yeah, he was a student of the game. He made up for his size with his intelligence and right. being able to pre-snap stuff. And he'd point things out and we're like, all right, we got to check out of that one. Wow. He was one of those guys. And same thing, you hear it, Luke Keekley. Luke Keekley's another one of those players that is so instinctual that you see him talking to the back end, to the front, and he runs down plays that – is strictly based upon him understanding what you're doing on the offensive side of the ball. That's that stuff's amazing when you see it. London up. Fletcher played in over 250 yeah. consecutive games and figured twice a year linebacker. up against the Redskins. Yeah. Yeah, Damn. I mean, sooner or later, he's going to pick up your tendencies. All right. Especially at that time, he was playing for Greg Williams, so you better know what he's doing. This one I felt like was the only cadence that I got on the first try, so I'll play it for you. I'll give you a hint. Okay. AFC North. Is that your Andy Dalton? No, this is uh, Baker Mayfield. Is it? This is, I just, I feel like I've heard Baker speak so Dad. much. Now that you say it, now you hear it. The, it. This is truly a game where... When you hear it, they all sound the same. Yeah. And then when you find out what their names are, you go, oh, yeah, exactly. Yeah. All right. It's just such a small snippet. Uh, has there ever been a quarterback that you believe had the best cadence or the best hard count, not including Eli? I figure, I mean, I really didn't play for any, I know you really any other quarterback. Time. I figure my rookie year, my starting quarterback was Kerry Collins. Okay. My backup was Jason Garrett. Wow. Yeah. What was he like? He was awesome. Really? Awesome. Did great he clap dude. All the great time guy then? in the locker room. <laughs> Did he? He was uh, Jason Garrett's the best. I have met Jason and when you meet Jason, it's hard to make fun of Jason because he's so he's such kind, a good dude. Which explains the clapping. Yeah. He's just trying to keep people yeah. positive, but the, it's a funny thing. The, the fake enthusiasm. Yeah, you gotta yeah, get it rolling. Yeah. And then my third string quarterback was Jesse Palmer. That wow. was my rookie year. And, and I then, saw on your IG, you guys still kick it. Yeah. And then uh, my second year, I had Kurt Warner and Eli. And that was it. Was that the Jesse Palmer bachelor year? Uh, yeah, the year before, the year of uh, How did that go 03 and 04. Uh, it happened after the season. And considering we went 4-12, and 12, they fired Jim Fossil. <laughs> and the season was an absolute mess. Uh, I think that it like kind of dwindled away that way. But he uh, definitely, when we had spring ball and it came back, I don't want to spend the rest of my life unless I spend it with you. We oh used to come gosh. up with quotes and lines from it That's so and give funny. it to him during spring ball and stuff. But, I mean, he's one of the best to do it. Speaking of IG, 
I think I've deduced your three favorite athletes of all time. Okay. Tell me if I'm right. Okay. Walter Payton. Number one, hands down. I mean, I'm wearing Walter Payton shoes. you're wearing the Walter Payton shoes, yeah. 270s. I think Muhammad Ali is in your top three. He's top top four, I okay. would say. And I feel like your third is Ric Flair. He's number two. Damn. Number two. So then who am I missing? Number one, Hulk Hogan? Walter Payton. Number two, Ric Flair. Number four, Muhammad Ali. Number three, Eli yes. Manning. David Deal. Larry Bird. Larry Bird, 33. Larry Legend. Growing up in Chicago, don't get me wrong, I've got Jordans. He was yeah. the greatest player that ever played. But there was just that quiet cool about Larry Bird. Yeah. I mean, the story of him going in before the three-point shootout, okay, who's coming in second? Right. How could you not love that I about think, him? I think Larry Bird shit-talking goes so it, – it was so smooth and oh, so Oh, yeah. But I'm more curious about the outward shit-talking of Ric Flair – how 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 did this start? How did it I'd grow? Grown up as a kid, watching WWE wrestling and WCW, my parents would go to work on Saturday. Saturday mornings, I know what a camel clutch feels like. I know what a figure four <laughs> leg lock feels like. And I couldn't say anything to my mom. I'm the youngest of three boys. My mom was still going to work. I please don't go to work, mom. She'd be like, "Oh, this is so sweet." I couldn't tell her what was happening. I'd get it worse. So growing up, I just wait. Ripped... Time out. So you had older brothers that yeah. just beat the crap out of All you all the time. I remember I going up for layups. Brother. I'd go into the wall or into the garage, hit over a, a fence one time. How much older were they than you? My oldest brother is nine years. My middle brother is seven. Oh, so they really beat Oh, them. yeah. How I, much did I that help you? I got a dart in the leg one time. No way. Uh, yeah. What was that story? Well, I beat him, and I was yelling, talking trash. The dart comes from the back hallway. <laughs> thump, I get it in the leg. Ah! How, did I mean, did it really make you that much tougher? Do you Without think? a doubt. Because then when you go out there and I'm playing AAU basketball up against kids my own age, I'm like, these guys are soft. Yes. This is easy. I'm not getting thrown into the wall here. Man. So it made things so much easier to transition because you're always playing up. So you're playing up against older kids. I've uh, I've interviewed Ric Flair uh, twice. Uh, I've met his w- now wife. Yeah. Hung out. I think the thing that people think about Ric Flair is his personality when he was really in his prime. With, with the cockiness and stuff was over the top. I don't know if I've met a nicer person. Never. I'm telling you, he's the kind of guy where there will be 200 men, grown men, lined up single file, and he'll leave 50 voicemails, he'll record 110 he'll talk videos, to every one of them. and he'll get done, and then you'll see him in the back, if you can go in the back, yeah. and he'll be exhausted. But he'll give every fucking thing to people, Everything. man. It's incredible. It, we were, it, I met him at the Super Bowl for the first time. I've interviewed with him, I've talked to him over the phone, but I, this is the first time I ever met him. So I was, I mean... This is like me be- meeting Jim Brown and Walter Payton when I was a kid. Like, these are huge moments. I yes. Mean, these are guys you watched as a kid. And I'll never forget how humble he was. Yeah. There's somebody coming around like the security, Ric Flair. The person almost got clothesline. No, no, no. He's cool. Yeah. Let him, let me sign it for yeah. him. He came all this way. Like, people don't normally do that, especially if you're Ric Flair and you get that attention no matter where you go. Yeah. Just to see him have that type of personality, I mean, that's, that's what you want out of do people. Do you have a favorite Ric Flair rant? Mine is the silver spoon. I love the silver spoon. I was raised with the silver spoon. I love know. the silver spoon, and I spent more money on liquor last year than oh, you man. spent. Oh, th- that's one of the greatest ones. He was ever. the best. He was High the fly and limousine. Oh yeah, limousine riding. riding. Yeah. Uh, can I? Do you have any weird fingers? That fourth one. At, both fourth. Fourth. Why are both of your ring fingers jammed from playing in the NFL? 2011, Vince Wolfer. He's pointing to his left hand right now. Vince Wolfer spins. I go to twist him. <gasps> this is the only finger that's in stuck something? in his shoulder pads. Damn. The re- entire rest of the season through the 2011 season, I played with a cast. I had a broken hand. He was so big, and the force of it, my knuckle on the side was powder. I have, like, nine screws. I have metal plates in here. Like, they had to sew underneath to pull it back on. Basically, he ripped my Can finger. You, like, what, what would you compare the pain to? Um... I don't know. That one was probably the worst pain I've ever Fuck felt. Man. I've had my thumb ripped off. Oh, yeah, that one's a little yeah, down, I, that too. That one was down to here, and man. then I had to get it sewn back How on this one. How hard is it one. to block with a cast? It's or, hard. Is there anything that's an advantage? Well, yeah, because it's it's hard. It protects, so you can hopefully that's do some damage with it. That's what I've always thought, it. is you could just punch someone but in the, the chest. But the same thing, though. You have no grip. You have no control over the body and surface You're area. You're not supposed to have grip, David. Well, that's only if you get caught. <laughs> and then what about your other, your right hand? Just, once again, everything's like a game when you're out there pass setting, so you're not throwing your hands right. at the same time. So, like, I used to call up after my first coach, 
the one arm Pistola, the really? Anthony Munoz. Miles McNally was my coach my rookie year for the Giants. He coached Munoz all those times in the Bengals and would show me these tapes. So flash it, pull it back, and flash yeah. again, see if they swipe. And one time I flashed, I pulled it back, and I went to swipe again, and I drilled Frosty oh, Rucker right in the top of his helmet, right in the crown. I had them taped together. These, like, you could see how my fingers are like yes. Spock because you tape them together so much they start to mesh. It ripped through the tape. Like, my finger was like on, on to the side. Like, I go to pull it back. People are like, you're crazy. Yeah. I have the nose. I probably broke my nose 15, 16 I times. I feel like I would be thinking two thoughts at the same time. One, I can't let people see my pain because I don't want them to think yeah. I'm a wimp. But also, if I overcome this, I'm the baddest man they're ever going to see. Like, were you, did you want people to see how fucking hardcore you were when something After, like that happens? Yeah, not during because the minute that you give that defensive lineman that, they're hacking away at your hand. Are they really? Oh, yeah. If you did had you something play, wrong. Did you finish those games? Yeah, I, I finished the entire season i played from november all the way through the super bowl in 2011 and were people it. going after the hands after they found out yeah i had Damn. like a pair of nike gloves that were split like baseball gloves half white half black and i taped that side just black to try sh masking it uh they caught on to it so they're hacking away right at that hand best shit talkers you faced uh well strahan every day in practice when what, he was on is, the other what side is a strahan he was like? just funny about it he mm. would like make jokes and make funny stuff yeah. about ha how bad he'd be beating people on the other side so he was great um i mean there was a lot. seymour used to talk trash he was yeah. pretty funny there's a lot of guys out Shit, there. The D line, you guys were going up against practice, man, with Tuck and OC Tuck, and Stray. OC Stray, Matthias Kiwanuka, JPP. Like, there was a rotation I love of those guys. He Mainly was an I unsung love saying hero. His name. Like, yes. literally, he could play Sam. He could play defensive end. He could play Will. Matthias Kiwanuka is the perfect example. <laughs> I compare them to, like, top picks in the NBA, where, like, it, like someone like an Andrew Wiggins. Yeah. Andrew Wiggins did not live up to being the top pick, but he's going to have, like, a 15-year career because he's so freaking athletic. Darius Hayward Bay, not great for the eighth or ninth pick in the draft, but he's in the fucking NFL for yeah, 12 years. Bingo. So Matthias Kiwanuka was going to be in that draft, the super edge rusher out of Boston, Boston College. College was yeah. so good. But he had this long career and was able to play all these different positions because his athleticism guy. was yeah. so good. He, was, yeah. he, he could play everything. He was smart. He wouldn't. He was selfless. He'd play DeAnne. He'd play Sam. He'd play yes. everything that you want him to play. And he was one of those guys that would be pointing out things that the offensive really? side of the ball would be doing. Oh, yeah. That's so awesome. if you have a guy like that and you're saying, hey, watch this, watch this, it helps the rest of the defensive line and linebackers for what they're looking for. What in on the David Tyree catch did you block well? I haven't like looked at it. I don't think any of us block well. Otherwise, it would be known as it wouldn't be known as the play that I it was going to say that you guys should be applauded for performing so poorly on that play <laughs> because if you blocked the Eli spin never happens. No, he probably just hits David Tyree over the middle. It's in stride, but instead, beca because of your guys' inability to block. History was made. Congratulations. I, I, yeah, I, At least I, you did better than Snee on that play. Well, no, Snee didn't have anybody. It was the left side. We got a twist and a stun up front to where Eli couldn't step up. It was kind of drifting. We just kept blocking. The funny thing is, is that people always ask, what was it like when he caught it? We had no idea. He caught yeah, it where were you helmet. facing when he caught we, it? We're in the middle of a, of a two minute drive to win the Super Bowl. We just thought he caught it. We had no idea. We're pushing. We run to the ball because we got to spike it. And we actually had a fourth and one after that that we had to convert that nobody remembers. No. So I we just had remember fourth, that yeah. and then the Plaxico catch. So Plaxico scores the touchdown. We get off to the sidelines. I'm sitting on the bench, and we're looking at the jumbo truck. So that's the first time you the saw it. The fans are going crazy, and I'm looking at Soy, but he's looking at me, and we're like, did he just fucking catch it off of his helmet? That was the first time we ever saw it. Wow. So you guys were probably like the only five people in the world that didn't see that play didn't live. Didn't see it live, yeah. Damn. That's the struggles of being an offensive well, line. Well, it ended up getting done, and we ended up winning that game. Did you? Fuck it. You're still mad. No, I'm actually vindicated now because the Eagles beat the Patriots, so it kind of puts us into a club as like the three teams to beat Tom Brady. But and we did the, it twice. You, you did, did you did. And you still got three to catch up, too. You know? What is your feeling towards the Eagles? I hate I, the Eagles. It was a, it's to me like if Nick Foles goes to Washington, I really You're don't okay care with it. Yeah. Because it's I feel not like down the turnpike e it's Eagles, far enough Giants, away. Giants and Cowboys are like Washington, you haven't been relevant like 25 30 years. You're not interested. Like I don't care. Yeah. 
But Cowboys, it's always been a hatred just because I was raised to hate the Cowboys. Giants, it's always been an older brother, younger brother thing. Like, it's always been like a brotherly yeah. battle where – the games are always brutal. There's yep. always freaking injuries. Those in are those ones games. that you're going in, regardless of what the record is. You know it's going to be a fist fight. So you what, know right away. So who were the, your biggest fist fights with with the Eagles? Figure. I mean, we had Trent Cole on that side of yep. the ball. I mean, at that Corey time, Corey Simon. That's yeah. a little later. You were Mike Patterson. Mike Patterson. We had uh, we had the freak on the outside. Oh, we had Javon Curse. We had a, oh, Hugh Andy Douglas. Kalu, Hugh Douglas. I loved Andy Kalu. Uh, who else did we uh, – at the time, you had Mark Semino earlier as a linebacker. Right, Jeremiah Trotter. Jeremiah Trotter. Trotter almost single-handedly. Derek Burgess. It, Trotter almost killed Jeff Eagles. That was before they put the rule on when you could hit the punter. Yeah. Literally, Trotter almost killed in Philadelphia Jeff Eagles the hit he put on him. Do you remember the Deshaun Jackson? That game never happened. <laughs> never happened. <laughs> Literally – we were hurled. What's your best moment of you, kicking the Eagles' ass, and what's your least you favorite hear, moment? You hear all week, don't kick it to him. Don't kick it to him. In that moment, I'm sitting next to Kevin Booth. He kicks it down the middle of the field. Kevin Booth just drops his helmet. He goes, it's fucking done. We didn't even watch it. We knew it was going to happen. Damn. 21 points. Oh, that shit was crazy. Crazy. That quick. And what that was your turnaround. favorite moment of kicking the Eagles' ass? I think in, uh, in Philadelphia when I almost pulled a fan out of the stands. Oh, tell me that story. So I'm coming in, and, you know, I laugh. I always chime in with them. I'm like, that's a good one if they say something funny. I always chime in. But it was the second year after we played. It was my second year. We're playing in 04 in Philadelphia, and I'm walking out. It's my first year playing right tackle. And a fan grabs me by my Mm. jersey and my back, and he tells me, I hope you break your fucking leg just like Rich Soybert last year. Damn. Remember, he had a spiral fracture. And that's your fac- boy. Tri- tibula, fibula, ankle. Spiral fracture. That's the only time I've ever seen anybody and heard anybody in between a play scream, falling down, waving to the to the head trainer. Wow. To come. He knew instantly. So I turned around, and I snatched him, and I got a good piece of that starter jacket. <laughs> and I'm going to rip, and I see the hands, and my security guard pulls me. Right, He's like, right. no, 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 no. So I jam him back in, and him and his buddies, like, you could see the fear in yeah. him. Yeah. Following year, we go back, and I turn over towards that section. Great to see you, Mr. Deal. Welcome to Did Philadelphia. Really? Oh, yeah. That's amazing. That's one of my greatest memories. And what's funny is is something just happened last night where a little kid, Russell Westbrook's on the court, and Russell Westbrook walked by, and the little kid pushes him. And Russell Westbrook turned, noticed it was a kid, like took a deep breath, and then like leaned in and started talking to yeah. them. And it's this thing where we need to explain to kids very early that this isn't okay. No. But but what's funny is so many of the comments were, calm down, it's just a kid. He didn't even push you that hard. No, do not you fucking touch know. a human, man. That's the thing. Like, if he would have just been yelling, I would have been fine. The fact that he grabbed me physically, your first instinct is to defend yourself yes. and to turn around. And like I said, I got a good snatch when of the jacket. When you see video of, like, the Jaguars defensive lineman almost going in the stands. That's ridiculous. Marcus Peters, like, going up there. The- At the same point. Is there a part of you that goes, I wonder what was said to provoke him? Because there, there's no reason that he's just going up and No, there's it. certain guys that you know that you're trying to push the envelope with. Like I would read in the bios when we were getting ready for games. Ooh, tell gets me involved this. in personal battles. That player, I wouldn't sit there and I'd have to say stuff to. But like I always did in my career, the minute the whistle would blow, I'd give an extra push. A little one. Just a little one. And all of a sudden, it starts getting annoying. And all of a sudden, what you're doing is, I'm going to be on you for four plus quarters. I'm not giving up. Yeah. And sure enough, they're hitting it off. And they're hitting it off. The next thing, they're going to swing at you. And they're not focusing on what they're supposed to be doing on the field. They're so pissed at you, they just want to fight you. Wow. So you have linebackers yelling at them because you're gashing them for runs and zone schemes. Yeah. And they're just so pissed off at you, that's all they focus on. Have you ever gotten, like, really into somebody's head? And Ant, uh, Antoine Smith. Damn, you thought of that so quick. <laughs> well, easily. Because I, I played up against what him when he was, he, in, he was on Houston. I played up against him when he was in Arizona. Literally, we snapped the huddle. And we t- I turned around. It's on, Deal. He's already pointing at me. I'm like, all right, I got this Yeah, one. yeah. This one's great. Because then you know you've kind then of won you know. already. So there's, there are fans that they know who to, who's going to antagonize, who's going to talk back. Yeah. You know that type of stuff. But at the same time, like – you're not going to go up in the stands. Don't be stupid no, 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 enough no, no, to no. do that. But secondly, 
How many times do we hear like these fans? Oh, lawsuit! He put water on me. He did this. Oh yeah, shut the Like the guy up. at the the Jaguars or the Bills game. Like, yeah. You can't put your fans no. physically on people, but yet nothing's done about it. Ever, ever. ever. We, no, we let fans because they're just one of the seventy thousand working Joes with a nine to five, and I'm like, these guys I, are working right I, now. And I understand that, and I have nothing but the utmost respect. I was a fan of this game long before yeah. a player, and you love the way that stadiums are. That people are crazy because they're fully invested in the stadiums would not feel like that yeah. if it wasn't for the fans. But at the same time, if you and I were in a bar right now and you said something to me and you just jam me like that, you'd be running. You wouldn't be standing in the stands say, right now egging it on. When I when I see you like doing a game or something like that, I always think there's something about Deal where like if I was in Hoboken with him, I would feel very safe. I just feel like if a bro stepped to you, well, when I'd you're be six, like, this seven would be and you're the awesome. biggest guy in the room, you can yeah. kind of do that. And that's like, Do people a, pick fights with you just because you're big? No. No. I mean, okay. as a kid, they used to try to test me. That's I what mean, I mean. Yeah, you're the biggest kid going around. The older guys are going to try to test you. I got to yeah. do a bunch of fights as a kid. Ooh. Yeah, I mean, it's south side of Chicago. That's part of growing up there, yeah. you know? But Pizza you know, when it comes, or not pizza? Oh, I eat pizza. No, what I mean, like, is Chicago pizza pizza? Oh, yeah. Deep Would you dish, take it? Would, Gino's, without a doubt. New York or, or Chicago? Chicago, hands down. Really? I don't like the fold. I'm not a fold guy. Wow. I know the triangle. I am not anti go. Chicago no, pizza. No, I'm not anti New York I just pizza. Could but only if I was to choose, one slice of I would take Chicago all day. Damn. All day. A Chic- how how big is the Croatian population in Chicago? Huge. Huge. Figure the three biggest are New York, Chicago, and California. Just a shout out to all the Croatian partiers there out there. Because I have a feeling you guys all get down. Oh yeah. My only other Everybody question about getting other. into head was is there ever a time where someone really got into your head and you can admit it now that, damn, they kind of got me that time? No, I don't think anybody got into my head that way. I think, you know, when you're sitting there, you're playing your rookie year. I think that's when you're sitting there like the man. I'm 21 years old, starting in the NFL my first season. Like, and you're looking at a Tiki Barber and an Amani Toomer and a Kerry Collins yeah. and a Jeremy Shockey. Like, the magnitude of the situation hits you pretty quick. So I think more of them not get in, getting into my head, it was more of me, like, digesting everything that was going down and making right. sure that I knew everything that was taking place on a defense because it doesn't matter at that point whether you're a rookie or a fifth-year guy. Everybody else is looking at you and relying on you to get the job done. No excuses, no BS. Yeah. So that was one of the biggest things for me. I think that would get more into my head. More than trying to get after other people, I was more focused on doing my job my rookie year. Would you rather have the earth, wind, and fire backfield of Jacobs, Bradshaw, and Ward or Saquon Barkley? I mean, that's that's a tough one. Don't get I know they're your boys. Saquon is everything that you can ever imagine that God put in a yeah, running I saw back's you, body. You tweeted it. He's like the most prepared he player He is the you've most ever seen. prepared player and rookie I've seen in a very long time. Minicamp this past year. They had a blocking assignment. He was supposed to have a blitz pickup. He went the wrong way. They're like, no, you have to pick up. A... He's like, no, I read in the book. They're like, no, you have to. He's like, I read this last night to where they flipped back, and whoever drew up the cards drew it up wrong. He was actually blocking wow. the right guy that it said on the sheet and for the install for that day, yet somebody drew it up wrong. Wow. And not only did to know it, but to have the balls to stand up and say, no, I'm right, right. to other coaches. You better really you know. Better really know. So that, that's something that you can't take away from him, the type of humble person that he is yeah. and what he brings to other people. Like Those are things that you absolutely love about him as a player. But to be a part of, uh, of a group of, <laughs> of five <laughs> offensive line groups in NFL history to block for 2,000-yard backs, yeah. i got to go with earth, wind, and fire. It's a great name, too. It's awesome. And, 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 and also, think of, I think it was Ward when Ward – was it Ward or Bradshaw? I think it might have been Bradshaw when he jumped and spiked the that's ball. That's Bradshaw. That shit was the coolest video. Oh, when ever. he did that at uh, the Christmas Eve game up against the Jets in yeah. 2011 after running over a Jet, that was one of the biggest celebration moments I think we all had. That's awesome. Yeah, we were called the little brother all year by, uh, by right. Rex Ryan. Right. Fuck that guy. Game over. We know that we have to win out. Christmas Eve, the the Empire State Building's red, white, and blue for Giants right. colors. I mean, pff, doesn't get any better than that. Um, Odell, where do you, like what can you share? Because this we are the biggest pro Odell uh, show ever. How could you not? Uh, the would name make of our every fantasy, one of us better. The name of our fantasy team was Odell Rogers. Okay, because it was just our two yeah. favorite players. But I'm curious, like, what can you share about Odell the worker? that never gets out in the media because it's either Odell the dancer or Odell the trade bait. Like, what can you share with that? 
He's sitting out there before and after practice, at least getting 100 balls from the jug machine. They have this pole that you stand behind. It's like a real thick pipe. And so that they, you can't see anything? You can't see, and they throw it hit, and he's got to turn sideways the opposite way with his head to see the football because he can't go the same way with his hands. He'll do that. Every time he catches a ball, he runs it through the end zone like a touchdown. The way that he handles his rehab, the way that he attacks his conditioning, those are things that you can't deny. And the thing about him – of the GM, oh, I don't know about – you would sign this guy in a minute because you know that he can turn your football team and your offense into one that can turn a five-yard slant into a 60-yard touchdown. Yeah. He makes the running back better. He makes the offensive line better. Makes the quarterback better. Makes the other wide receivers and Do tight ends better. you think he's going to be on the Giants for the next two years? I don't know. I think it's all why based is upon – Yeah, what's going on? Why do you think we're in this situation? The only reason why is, number one, you know what type of return on investment that you can get from him considering the holes that not only they have on the offensive side, but more on the defensive side of the ball right. for the Giants. And those are assets you can have for the future. And when you're tying up that much money into one player, right. it's hard to disperse that and spread it around the locker yeah. room to other areas of need, even though he is the best at his position. And when you think about that long term, I just think it's more based upon the way that he carries himself and his health. That's the mm. biggest thing that people talk about. Oh, the stuff off of the field. That's not what concerns me. I want a healthy teammate out on the yes. field for 16-plus games. Right. That's what concerns me, not him being a distraction in a locker room because he's not, not because of the social media stuff, because everybody in the NFL does it. Exactly. I'm more concerned about just having him out on the football field than anything else. Uh, I don't know where you are with the draft. I'm just starting I'm to kind of look it. at it. Like I'm, I like to use the combine as – I'm just watching guys, and I'm just seeing who pops. Yeah. And I know that that's not going to be my ultimate designation of what I think. But for right now. But from right now, there are certain linebackers that I go, damn, look at his legs. Yeah. Or I'm going to look at an offensive lineman and go, he's so much more athletic, and that's just he's my introduction. He's top heavy. He has no legs. Who are just, no matter what position, just your favorite players entering this time of the year? Well, I'm excited to see Nick Bosa work out. Okay. I really am. I mean, he had such a small It feels like sample. Miles Garrett where there's the clear number one and yeah. then everybody else, and it seems like Nick's that guy. And, and I just want to watch him more in his workouts and what he does at the Combine because, honestly, when I sit there and I look at him outside of power, I actually think he's better than his brother. Wow. His hands, his and he's lean, not as big as his brother. His leverage, his ability, because he's he's lighter, he's more athletic. This is he just can jump typical gaps. little brother po propaganda. You guys are better <laughs> because you're true. So no, I'm excited to watch him. I'm excited to watch Haskins and the rest of these quarterbacks yeah. throw. You know he's thrown. You know Luck's thrown, uh, or Locks thrown. You know yep. those guys are going to be throwing. And the one thing that I would suggest, I know Kyler Murray wants to go out there, and a lot of it when you're doing that stuff is confidence. But could you talk about and imagine little brother around those guys who are six five and six yeah. four? How much smaller you look? He's going to look. Think about him looking at that at the, with Tua and Haskins at the at the at the Heisman. Uh, Heisman. He looked like the little kid in the middle. It, it is kind of like I call it Lefko PR, but if you know he doesn't make a good throw and then he goes back and Haskins is like towering over him. You don't look the part. No. Think and about so much of this part of the year is looking the part. Everybody AKA saw Josh Blake Allen Bortles throw out even before he threw a football last year. Walk out like ooh. Look at the size of him compared to all right. the other quarterbacks. Those are the little things that you look at that scouts and open up because he has an it heads. factor. Yeah. Those first initial things that you always see from players usually are the things that show up time and time again. Now that I think about it, like Johnny Manziel, he just went out there and did his own private workout, and he did it in the pads, and that was all you really saw of that him. That was it. Yeah, I guess yeah, it's like, easy to do that because you're running the you're whole right. workout. Haskins is going to – I would say right now that I think ahead of the combine, Haskins being out there looking the part, his biggest issue is, is immobility. Yeah. You don't show that there. No. You know what I mean? You're just going to roll out, no yeah. defenders. You're not going full speed. It's not right. like your private workout at Ohio State. he's got a massive State. arm. He's got a cannon. Yeah. The only thing that you worry about is his lack of experience. But if the case is, like we said, the New York Giants are in love with him, right. and they pick him because they're in love and not that they're forcing the issue, you know that he'll be able to learn things from Eli Manning from his experience, and he'll push Eli Manning to be his best because if not, you know, Eli knows that this is his right. last run. I would also say, too, the last quarterback that we had with one year was uh, Mitchell Trubisky, and he still went top three. And I think he is more of an athlete than a quarterback, while Haskins is more of a quarterback than an athlete. Agreed. And everything that I'm hearing, and I know our guys on Stick to Football, Matt Miller and Connor Rogers, were saying – Matt's been hearing at Ohio State, his board work is insane. Like his ability to yep. retain plays. And that will come out.
out this week. Yeah, it will. You know, coaches will start talking about it. Teams will start talking about it. And if you have massive arm, great at the board, then even if he's just there for a year, you have that's the IQ fine. and the intelligence yeah, that's that all you can you break need. it down. I mean, that's what the Wonder Lick is for. When you sit there and you look at 50 questions in 12 minutes, basically it breaks down to almost like what 14 and a half seconds per. Right. It's just like What'd digesting. You get on the uh, I don't even know. I can. I got my degree. I got my master's all when I was I at took, Illinois. I'm a, I'm an overachiever. I took uh, the online one, which I don't know if it's the same. Yeah. And I got a fucking 41. Did you really? And I just held it over Sims's head the whole time. Yeah, I, I, don't, like, I don't know what I had, but either way, like I said, the whole point of that is in that 50 questions in 12 minutes. Yeah, just quick. What can you process in that amount of time? How quickly can you do it? It's not overly hard. It's just you thinking through yeah. the process of going from one to the other. And the other thing that you have to understand is. Now you're going to meet players and get to actually meet them. Mm. Not things that you see on film. You're actually going to get to know the personality of this player. Okay, what did I see on film? Is that true and accurate? Or is this person who I'm seeing now, this is the more accurate yeah. guy? Is he a leader? Is he not a leader? Is he walking with confidence? Or is he just kind of waiting for us to run the show? Right. Those are all things that you're trying to digest. Just for me, for my viewing stuff, any O-line or D-lineman that I should keep my eye on uh, this week? Obviously, Cody Ford, the big guy out of Oklahoma. Oklahoma. Okay. He's one that you have to want to watch out for. Obviously, Jonah Williams out of Alabama. He's another big one. I don't know what they're going to do with Jawan Taylor. He's the, the offensive injured, tackle out of yep. Florida. He's injured. But I'll tell you what, I watch film on him, and he is a very good offensive tackle. Yeah, this is super early, but is there one offensive lineman that you think has the most potential? I, I could see him or Dillard. I could see Dillard coming out of uh, Washington State, stepping okay. up and making a move. Because he's an athletic guy. You could see it in his feet and the right. way that he moves. Uh, but if Juwan Taylor was the guy that I was looking to watch him. and Which drill uh, should I care the most about? I would say mirror dodge back and forth and how they kick set and when they're pulling. Those are the mm. ones. Do they have sink in their hips? Is it an easy step or are they stepping underneath themselves? Are they able to keep up with the, the rabbit and the uh, offensive line? Right. Are they backing up or are they staying at the line? Those are simple things that people are like, oh, well, we backed up behind He's given up ground on the O line, and he's yeah. not even given up touched. Those Damn. are things you have to think about when you're going through everything. And the things that I've always said to players when they're going through this process, don't think that there's a time at the combine where nobody's watching. They're all watching. Whether you're walking through they're the lobby, go whether later. you're going through the hotel, yeah. what, no matter what you're doing, you're hanging out with the guys. Everybody's digesting everything that you do because they're all looking for that one thing he can't do. My, he can't do this. He can't do that. So my guy is Quentin Nelson. Like Q, like uh, we we hung out a little bit at the Super Bowl. He's, He's the awesome. Best. I know Q. I know McGlinchey. I met all those guys when they were rookies or freshmen at, at uh, Notre, Notre Dame. Dame. My right. line coach at Illinois for my five years was Harry Heastan, who was at Notre Dame and wow. now the Bears. So that's why oh, I was damn, able. They love him. Uh, he was it's still to this day the best line coach I could have ever asked for. There's Damn, a reason I why I was things. versatile and able to play all the positions starting my rookie year. It's because I did it at Illinois. If somebody get hurt, he'd move me here. Me and Q uh, thought he was going to the Bears because of that. Yeah. Because we thought Harry would draft him there. McGlinchey, then... Ronnie Stanley, yeah. Nelson. I mean, you could keep going on Zach and on. Martin. Zach Martin, his brother, Nick Martin. Yeah. They're all unbelievable players. From your perspective, there was a lot of lofty praise given to Quentin Nelson that he might be – he was an all-pro as a rookie, which is crazy. There's nothing lofty about what he did this year. He deserved every single I'm just curious when you – when the perspective of the league, you know, when you're an all-pro as a rookie and you're a top six, seven draft pick – all of a sudden we're going to go, wow, he's on a track right now yeah. to be an all-time special. Do you believe that I believe. I believe. Really? It. Figure he changed the complete dynamic of that offensive line. And he would never take credit for oh, it. Oh, no, and, and that's something you'd never do as an offensive line. Yeah. You're never going to take credit for that. But his, his toughness, his just nastiness to get after people and want to do that time and then time again, it's no coincidence they gave up the least amount of sacks in the NFL and went from worst to first with that group. Yeah. Now you see the way that they're going to continue to move forward. They get another running back in there in Indianapolis. Yeah. They fix everything and address everything on the outside. It's going to be a dangerous team moving forward. I can't believe I enjoyed talking to a giant. <laughs> Fuck. Not so bad for an eagle yourself there, Appreciate partner. It. Hey, man. You're the man, dude. Thank you. You too. Thanks for having me. Appreciate you, dude. As you can tell, Deal is the man. Really, really enjoyed it. I have no doubt that he will be back again. A guy that's paying attention to the league. A guy that's passionate and willing to stand up for what he believes in. Really enjoyed it. Speaking of passion. Speaking of the Giants. Speaking of... 
an absolute freaking legend and a should-be Hall of Famer. If you thought we weren't going to keep talking to Phil Sims on Wednesdays, you're absolutely crazy. The big fucker is here to stay. I was bothering him this morning. Nick, let's call that beautiful phone number. If Dirty Diana picks up, that's fine. I need to talk to him about what he's thinking for the draft. And I'm engaged now, so... Are we still having the wedding at Phil's house? We're going to find that out now. Big fucker, big fucker, yeah. Stop. The number you dialed is not in service. <laughs> That's incredible. Nick. Stop. All right, call a cell. All right, call a cell. That's that is one of the ultimate build something up. Can you imagine if Phil changed his number because he didn't want to do this show? That's incredible. Chris made him change his number. That sandbagging son of a bitch. He thinks he can run for him. Hello. Hello. Well, I guess there is something wrong with our house phone. I guess I didn't pay the bill. I don't know what the heck I went on there. but That's um, amazing. I just tried calling you guys and my house phone didn't work. What do you know? See, like that's the why this podcast is so great because we even fix telecommunications issues. And I got, hold on, I got something. Oh, of course, I got somebody calling me when I'm on the cell phone. I'm like, boop, boop. Man. You know, that's the one thing I love about the off season. what is that, Adam? Tell me. The phone stops ringing. Mm, yeah, people all <laughs> of a sudden don't need anything from you. I yeah, still oh, do. Yeah, you don't need anything. That's right. Yeah, yo, yeah. Oh, sorry, Phil. I haven't called you, but, you know, can you help me this? No. Well, hey, so. um, How are you? The show, I'm doing pretty well. Been traveling a lot. No, no, no vacations, just work and all yeah, that stuff. But it's all been good, and I'm doing well. Good. I'm I just I, here watching the TV, and you know we're going to have 40 quarterbacks drafted in the first round because yeah, I'm not sure they got their franchise quarterback yet. And uh, uh, you know uh, Tom Brady, and, and oh, it doesn't matter who you are, you might not be the guy. I just so it's amazing. Ha, have it's just you amazing? I, I almost want to turn the TV off already. Have you had a chance to dive into these kids yet? No, I have not. Okay. So I what are you at one of them one second yet except what I saw on TV during the year. Mm. And you know, I haven't done it for a lot of reasons. One, I need a break. Um so but I will. I'll probably start Saturday. I'll probably do just guessing, I'll probably do four or five quarterbacks on Saturday. Okay. That'll be my first and doing that. And I I'll, I'll probably end up doing about usually I try to do twenty quarterbacks. I stop there. Wow. And then, uh, and then I'll start doing the other players little by little. Yeah, so, your, your it's not son. Not really for any other reason, just to know them. So when they come in the league, I just got a good feel for who they are and yeah. who picks them and what uh, system they're going to fit in. So what'd you think uh, of that? That's it. What'd you think of the Giants coming out and saying Eli's the guy next year? Shermer's excited. Well, I just heard somebody on radio said, "Well, they got to see is he long term? Is he going to play five more years? They got to determine, <laughs> or if he's only going to play three more, they need to draft a guy to get him ready." And I'm just going, "Oh my God, please fire everybody." Holy Christ. We're going to draft him. He might play three more years, but we need to draft his uh, – get a guy in waiting. Oh, yeah. I know lots of guys in this day and age. You know, you draft them high, and they sit for three or four years, right? Don't you? I, have, you, Adam, that, I haven't, you, I haven't you seen that a lot. I haven't seen one since Rodgers. Well, yeah, yeah. And, of course, that was an extreme set of circumstances. And You know what? Let's be honest, too. Aaron Rodgers in his third year, really the talent really came out. Mm. In training camp, preseason, and practice, where they went, wow, we got to play this dude. Right. And uh, so uh, that was a very unique situation. It, you know what, though? It is kind of crazy when you think about it that Patrick Mahomes didn't play almost his entire first year. To see what he is now, it's kind of crazy that we never saw him when you think about it. Well, that just, that just shows you. And, of course, that team, without him playing, still went to play. So that just kind of shows you Andy Reid really – knew what he was doing, yeah. and, uh, you know, he got Alex Smith and knew that they could go to the playoffs or whatever. He protected Patrick Mahomes, and I kept going, wow, you know. I, it, it, I, it was hard for me to even – even though they went to the playoffs, but I did watch that last game that year, yeah, and I remember Denver. thinking, oh, my gosh, this is – you know, it was really pretty exciting to watch. It was against the Broncos, I think. And it was not in great weather, and he just made some throws. I just went, wow, that is really special. And, of course, he exceeded all of our ex expectations, right? I mean, did, 100%. Uh, to be MVP says, in your oh, first year. Do this, they're crazy. 
Yeah. I mean, we always knew he had potential. We always knew he had athleticism. But MVP your first year with 5,000 yards and 50 touchdowns, that, that would have seemed kind of like a pipe dream. So, well, Phil. There used to be, yeah. There used uh, to be an old guy, center from the Falcons, played a long time, Jeff Van Milt. And uh, he was from University of Kentucky. And he played forever. And they draft a center every two or three years. And they'd go to him and go, you know, this center they draft has got a lot of potential. And his great saying was, you know, potential is a French word, means he ain't worth the crap yet. And, and, and I cleaned it up for you. And uh, so, you know, that's, that's an interesting thing, you know, when I, when I see, oh, draft the guy for the future. You know, here we are, Derek Carr. Will, and, and I just saw him on TV. Two, two people sitting there. Do you think the Raiders are going to draft their quarterback for the future and start grooming him? Oh, yeah, yeah, Derek Carr. Let's see, he's off 28. It's time to start thinking ahead to the future. You know, just, mm. hey, you never know what will happen, but just, just the statement alone just says, wow, this, it's crazy. That so. is my favorite thing about NFL draft season is in the beginning of the college football season, people go, it's going to be a weak quarterback draft. And then, like, the yeah. week before the NFL draft, they're like, five quarterbacks are rumored to go in the first 20 picks. And you're like, what? Like, why, why are we always rushing to take the guy this year? If he's not there, he's not there. Yeah, it's a good point. And, you know, I remember that last year, everybody going, oh, we got to get one this year because next year's crop or whatever. Right. Well, how's it, look, how's it starting to look now? Mm. And, you know, there's kids that we haven't seen playing in college yet. We're going to see him next year, and we're going to go, oh, wow, he's going to be great. He's a franchise quarterback and all that stuff. And, and uh, so, yeah, yeah. I, I, I think I did say with you guys early in the year last year, I said, let's, let's pull back on this. It's not going to be a good quarterback draft class. Right. Let's wait. Because I thought it would be, and then, but as the year played out, I think there was a little bit of me. And then I pulled back the other way. Well, I don't think it's going to turn out the way I thought. Right. But now here it is, switching back. Of course, I didn't see Kyler Murray coming out of nowhere. Right. And, right. And, and that, that was big. And Drew Locke, who I was on all year and knew about him and watched him enough to know that. You know, he is, without question, a first-round talent. To compare how much of a crapshoot the draft is in two different sports, the NFL draft two year, or the, the draft with Mahomes, Watson, and Trubisky was supposed to be a bad quarterback draft, and all three of those guys have ended up being either good, great, or special. The NBA draft... Uh, this the the one mm. which was which was Lonzo Ball and uh, Markel Fultz that was supposed to be the draft that was stocked and none of those guys are doing anything and then the draft we just had for the NBA was supposed to be awful. Luka Doncic looks like a star. Trey Young yeah. looks incredible. Like the first six picks are all like first team All NBA rookies and so yeah, every cool. year every year we and the funny thing is is. In the beginning of the year, we listened to the college guy, the college special guy, and his advice on what it's going to be. And then when it comes to the draft, we don't listen to that guy anymore. So why are we listening to him when the season starts? It's it's so funny that we build up this narrative, and it's not always correct. Well, there's so many narratives that drive me crazy. Let's see, number one is, well, I worry about Mitchell Trubisky. He only played one year. Well, oh, my God, yeah. Oh, you got to start 32 games. And we're hearing really that well. with Dwayne Haskins now. But yeah, no, it's well, yeah, and it's okay. Haven't we put that to rest? You know, please right. be quiet. Be, don't say it. Don't don't show your your whatever. I don't want to just, but don't do it. One year, I I think I know who Dwayne Haskins is. I saw. Right. I don't see a need to see another year at Ohio State to validate what I saw this year. Oh, he lucked into those 50 some touchdown throws. <laughs> We've seen enough. We know who he is and everything, and, and that's good. Mitchell Trubisky, I liked him coming out. Did I think he was going to the second pick? No, but I thought he might go in the top 10 or 15 at worst. And so, you know, let's think about it. What's the difference if you go seven or two? What, it's a quarterback. And, you know, I remember this, and I'll just say, because there were so many Trubisky haters, yep. you know, most of them on TV commentating because they know so much. And, um, how did he look against the Philadelphia Eagles in the playoff game? He was the best player in the field. Yeah. Boom. You got that? Not Khalil Mack. Not anybody else. It wasn't Nick Foles. It wasn't Fletcher Cox. It was Mitchell Trubisky was the best player in the field. But when it comes to next year, the haters are going to say what? Well, you know, he just hasn't come through in the big spot yet. You know, the primetime game, the playoffs, you know, all that bull. And you can go back to hating. If you hate him, 
all you got to do is just wait because sooner or later they're not going to win the game or something. You can just go, see, I told you so. So, so I that, do. Ha- and here, here's my other pet peeve. Ready? Okay, yeah, let's hear it. You want me to go? Of course. Well, you know, if you trap Tyler Murray, you know, you got to be willing to get a special offense. Oh, again, please shut up. What is special? What is what did Oklahoma do that's so different that goes on in the NFL? Oh, if you draft Baker Mayfield, you got to create an offense just for Baker because of this. Oh, let's see. He got under center with a lot of two backs, play action passes, shotgun to the ball. Oh, yeah, that was really just something I've never seen in the NFL. So, you know, this this thing that we got to create an offense just for him is a big myth, and I don't know why everybody keeps saying it. Like, hmm. what what is it he did? at Oklahoma that is not done in the NFL. Can anybody, can you answer that? I, I just think that they see a lot of points and they see a lot of passing and they assume it's different because we love to say that the college offenses are spread and wild when really that was the NFL this year too. For a lot of the year it was. Yeah. And then as the year started grinding down yes, to it the does. end, you know, it's, you know, what the NFL, as I always say, is what? It's the fastest adapting organism in the world. Mm. And these defenses and coaches, the good ones, they started adapting to the offenses, and they kind of got a feel for all the stuff moving along. The players over and over kept seeing the same stuff because the league is a copycat league. Yeah. You know, just a good example. The Chiefs ran a play where Kareem Hunt went up the seam and caught a what a seventy five yard touchdown pass against the Patriots. Well, right. the following he missed it the first time. The following week the, the Patriots ran it and scored a touchdown. Against and then the by Saints. the end of the year, I think I counted twenty two teams that put the same play in That's and awesome. were running it. In fact the Chiefs ran it twice in the championship game and the running back was wide open both times and Mahomes against the Patriots uh got rushed one time and the other time it was just too quick to read. It got mm. off of it too quick and there so But the league just keeps copying, so the players on the other side get used to it, and they keep adapting. And I I thought the offenses really did slow down towards the end of the year. Speaking of adapting and evolving, I got some news for you, Phil. I have adapted Uh and evolved, and uh, I am now engaged. Well, congratulations. (laughs) Thank you. Man, I had a feeling when you said you were that. I said, "Uh uh-oh, here it comes, Uh, you know. I did it last. It, I did it last week in Anguilla. I popped the question, and now I'm a fiance, bro. Oh, were you shocked when she said yes? Uh, I felt <laughs> fuck you. I felt pretty <laughs> confident. Uh, she was uh, shocked, yeah, no, which was did. good. But uh, uh, I what, guess what would you say? Who was shocked? I think she was a little. She was surprised, which was awesome. Oh. Um, but I'm curious what kind of advice you got for me. Well, you know. I'm a smart ass. Uh, of course, I always tell this to all the people. I said, you know, I didn't know what happiness was until I got married. And everybody goes, oh, and I said, now it's too late. Uh, <laughs> so, you know, <laughs> uh, a, lot, a lot of wedding jokes, whatever. But um, good for you, Adam. Thanks, Great man. thing. Thanks. Really is. She's a nice girl and uh, all that. And, and I'm glad she said yes. And so when is this, do we have a, like, are we going to plan a wedding Next year, are we going to, like, oh, we don't know yet? We're going to wait six years before we get well, married? What, what's the, what's going on? You know, I, I I did ask you if there was any chance to maybe have it at your place. So I guess I kind of have to work with your schedule if that's possible. Well, you could probably have it here, but I just want to tell you, just to give you a, you yeah, know, well, well, yeah. a warning. No, I'm not going to charge anything. But doing a wedding at your house or on the property is really much more expensive than going oh, to some place. Oh, because you got to like rent all the tents it. and stuff. I, I, I mentioned there what that. Oh, because you have to like rent all the tents and stuff like that. Yeah, you got to do the tents. We got to get something to, to air condition the tent. You got to get lights. This. And oh, you've done you this before. The cost of the generator. Yes, I had my daughter's wedding here on the property, and oh my gosh. Really? Oh, I didn't when like the sound of that. People oh were gosh. telling me things. I said, how much that generator will cost? I said, there's no way. I'm not paying it. Let me call some people I know. <laughs> so everybody I called who was in the business, I thought, I'm going to get a great deal. They actually quoted me higher wow. than the people were charging me. I was like, oh, my gosh. So All right. Well, then I stand by on your house. I don't know. Now you're scaring What's me. What's that again? Now you're scaring me. Now I didn't know. Here I was thinking I was beating the system, but really I was just putting myself in a bad situation. Yeah, no, it's, trust me, it's <laughs> it's a big headache. Let some wedding 
venue take care of all the headaches for you and then just you know damn I then when it's the whole over, system you can just walk out all right damn all right maybe i'll have well, a how's business report. going man you know i i you know i'm just it's funny uh all these wednesdays during the year we talked most just about everyone i don't know if everyone but uh, yeah darn near all how's everything going my son you know he he you know he abandoned you or i know or whatever or maybe y'all kicked him out i don't know which Typical, typical. He's a slacker. All right. He wanted to take the he's easier way. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. But it's good. Uh, you know, we got, we had David Deal on today and he's telling me war stories and all that stuff. He came in. He was great. And we're just going to, we're going to meet a lot of new people and we're going to keep talking ball. And I'm going to keep calling you on Wednesdays so that once you do start studying that film, I can crack the code and enter that yeah, big yeah, old I brain. Will. You know, and I don't know if they're, you know, it, it's really, it's, it's funny. It's you said it earlier. Oh, it's not going to be you know everybody. Oh, it won't be a quarterback draft. But now once again, here Always we is. are, which yep. we are, and that's all that everybody is talking about nonstop, ever. And and they're measuring the words. Well, they said this word, and yep. you know, oh, you know, that's not a hundred. It just so they're you know, it's almost like politics. Well, what did you mean by is in the <laughs> and. I didn't like the way they said, oh, uh, Derek Carr is a franchise quarterback, but they didn't say for us. Mm. What do you think? Is that something? Should I tell us? You know, and, and, and all, I've learned this through the years, and so have you and everybody you work with, that you know somebody on a team or a coach or whatever, and you know what they're going to do to you? They're going to lie to you. Mm. They're going to lie because they want you to spread the news and help spread what they're trying to do. And right. I can't tell you how many good friends and people that I really kind of trust, and they lied to me. I just go, I said, oh, my God, you used me. I feel used. And, you know, they just kind of laugh. They go, yeah, man, sorry, you know, just, just doing my business here. Yeah. So to take anybody's word for anything, if they're a coach or an executive, you, you got to be crazy right now to listen to them. Well, Phil, I promise I'll never use you. Except we'll just talk on Wednesdays and be best buddies. <laughs> Appreciate you, man. Oh, hey, Adam, great to talk to you. Sorry, I got to look into this phone. You know, I, I I tried to dial you from my house phone, and it said it's out of my home. It was out of. Order. I I legitimately had about three seconds of fear that I said, "Oh no, Phil Sims is trying to avoid me, and he maybe just moved to get away from yeah. me." So I'm glad that's not. I the would case. never avoid you. You're too good of a man. I hey. really appreciate you. And listen, listen. I really mean this. Congratulations on the engagement. Thank and you, brother. Everything. I wish you well, and can't wait for the wedding, whenever it comes. And uh, we saw your athletic ability here last summer in wiffle ball and everything. <laughs> now I want to see what kind of dancer you are, brother. I got some moves, man. I have do some, you? Yeah, I do. I can really okay. rock with the best well, of them. Yeah, I got it. All right. All right, good. You know, you know, I'm kind of like this. Don't tell me. I want to show me. Of course. So of course. we'll find out. Be my pleasure. Thanks again, buddy. All right, buddy. See you, Adam. You have a great day. You Bye too, now. man. And that is, as always, the incomparable, the illustrious, the should-be Hall of Famer, Phil Sims. Always great to hear his voice. But now I'm, damn it, Nick, I'm questioning whether or not I want to have the wedding there. I don't want to think about it. I want to talk about football, but roll that beautiful music. Uh, thank you so much to Phil Sims for answering the calls when his phone works. Thank you so much again to David Deal uh, for dropping all the truth bombs. And thank you to the homies who continue to give their 33% like it's going out of style. I'll always give my 33. I know you'll give your 33. Dio definitely gave his 33 today, and he signed the contract to prove it. And Phil gave his 1%. And together... 100% of Lefko. Love y'all guys. You guys are the shit. Hit me up on social. Uh, the, 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 all the handles are still at Sims and Lefko. As we finalize this name will change. But you guys keep being awesome. I'll keep being awesome. And go out and seize the day. Because you're the shit and you deserve it. Holla at you later. Holla, holla, holla. For the L-E-F-K-O-E. Holla, 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 holla. Damn, I almost messed that up. Peace, guys.